the son of the former mafia boss, who everyone thought was dead. Dot has returned, with the sole purpose of recovering what was deceitfully taken from his family. Ruthless, lethal, and charming as hell. Dante is ready to take what belongs to him after five years of exile. Determined to get his revenge against his enemies, whom he once called family, he will unite with his loyal ones, encountering constant obstacles along the way that will have to be overcome with lead and blood. This is the beginning of a tireless fight for absolute dominion and for the heart of a forbidden woman. Elizabeth. Will he be able to get both? The new face of the Mafia has deep blue eyes and an insatiable thirst for justice. This book is a standalone. All books from the series are connected with each other, but can be read in any order. A Stranger's Visit In Paradise Let's Dance Heal Me I Hate You Cheers Tequila The New One Clash Sorrow Pull the trigger. Hurt. His love. The dark angel. Ice cream. Bring it. Bath time. Victor. Past mistakes. Anger. Farewell. You will also like. A stranger's visit. It was almost like my father had turned our house into an animal protection center, or well, that was what I first thought when he told me that Ferrati's son would come to live in the house for a while, while he handles some issues. Surely his son would be another thug, just like him. I had just come to Spain a couple weeks ago, my mother wanted it that way. I had an amazing life in Los Angeles, but being all by myself became risky after a rival gang took over the territory. If they found out who I was, that could have ended really bad. It is not bad in here at all, and honestly, I have missed this place a lot. There is just one thing, though. I hate always being surrounded by the same kind of men, thugs that think they own the world just because they hold a gun and are used to bossing everyone around. Ah. Uh, my father usually has a lot of his friends around. No matter how powerful or rich they are, I am so over their constant bullshit always trying to impress each other with stuff that to me is just stupid and frankly super boring. I was sitting outside near the pool when I saw him arrive. Ah. I rolled my eyes, he was wearing typical gangster clothes, an expensive suit that fitted his body perfectly, an expensive looking watch, and a white shirt with rolled up sleeves, a tattoo seemed to be on his arm, meh. Dante you came early you little bastard. Dad. I roll my eyes. Wait sweetheart, come here little bastard, you have grown so much. Godfather? They hug like two strong men, alpha males, I roll my eyes once again. Come here Elizabeth, meet Dante. I raise my glasses and look at him for a few seconds. Nice to meet you. Nice name. My pleasure, Elizabeth. He said, he seemed surprised with my way of answering. Come inside, you must be hungry. Well I can't deny it, I'm starving as hell haha. I love that Italian style you got, even though you are Irish aren't you? Not really godfather, my mother was Irish but I was born in Italy. Yeah, but he looks like an elegant Irishman doesn't he? He stares at me. I stay silent. What's wrong pretty, men in your town don't look like this. Said that guy unexpectedly. Do you mean the flashy gangster look? I reply. Ah. Spanish accent godfather, he shouts, I love it. I think you told me she was born in a small town near here, am I right? Yes son. Nice, I could tell. He laughs point eight. What the fuck does that mean? Wow and she curses like so as well, dot two. Oh, did you expect me to talk like a humble peasant girl and cover my face when you look at me? Fuck off. Damn. Maybe I will have to teach you manners my way, but don't worry, I think you might like it. Oh God. Don't talk to me like that, we're not the same, we're not on the same level. Oh, really? Well, I'm not the one who's wearing a fake pair of Gucci sunglasses, am I? He smiles mockingly. I want to shoot him dead. I look at his eyes, they're pretty, but since he's such a horrible lout, it automatically makes him ugly. 
Fuck you. He laughs and shakes his head. Stubborn as a mule. Do I look like a fucking horse to you? Not quite. But you may have a lot in common. Once you hold them and take control, it is when it gets fun. That was it. I immediately grab my dad's gun and point it at him. He raises his hands, smiling. Easy, Elizabeth, I was just testing your character. He winks. How about you test a bullet in your balls? Oh, come on, I really like my buddy down there, don't do this to me. He smirks. Elizabeth, get a hold of yourself. But dad dot did you hear him? I greeted her nicely godfather, and then she went like this. Elizabeth. The gun. Ah. Uh. All right. I put the gun down, took my towel very annoyed and walked into the house. Sorry Dante, she is very impulsive as you could tell, just like her mother. Don't worry godfather, it's not the first time they draw a gun when they meet me. I bet haha, -ha, come on, let's go eat already. Rosalie, tell the boys to bring down Dante's things. Mr. Dante, long time no see. Rosalie. They hug, now it turns out that the jerk knows my cook. Wow. Look how much the boss has grown. And you look just the same, Rosalie. The food is ready, spicy, as you like it. You know it, Rosalie, Godfather, shall we eat or what? You're right, son, let's go. They go to the dining room. Amazing, now I'll have to wait for that disgusting stranger to finish eating so I can go down. Elizabeth, five minutes for you to come eat with us. Shit. Yes, Dad. I act the fool while planning to never come down to eat, but I hear a lot of scandal downstairs. I look out, I run into Pablo and Harry, who hug him excitedly. Dante, my dude, how have you been? Guys, nice to see you. Surviving, you know, how about you? Good man, we are so happy that you are here again. What brought you all the way here? We knew you had arrived and then we pulled over here to see you. Do you still remember how to ride horses? We saw your pics in Ireland with that beautiful racing bike. Man, are you kidding me? What you learn well, you never forget Harry. I know of a beautiful horse that you will like then. My uncle Rick said he has one specially for you, if you like it, you know. Of course, that would be great. We can go check it out later. Hold on guys. Don't you ride motorcycles too? Yeah. From time to time but for most stuff, a good horse will do, and after all, the town festival is coming and you can't go without one. You have to come with us. Right. Well sounds good to me. So, what have you been up to guys? Um well college, haha. No fucking way. Godfather also signed me up for some courses. He said it'd be good to learn about how to better manage my finances while I am here. And I can finally finish my studies. I couldn't say no to that. How cool man, so we will be together. With all of us there, I am sure no one will mess with us. Just like the old times. So, how are the girls around here? Not bad at all. Come on, I'll tell you on the way. They leave the hacienda, and I feel frustrated. I run to my room and call Andrea and Isabella. They are so good to me. They have become my best friends since we met years ago when I was little, and now that I am living here permanently, well, even more. What's wrong, Elizabeth? I don't know where to start. It turns out that my dad has given asylum to one of those Ferrati. What? Is any of them still alive? I heard something terrible happened to their family. Well, at least one is, the aforementioned Dante. My god, Elizabeth, Dante is here in Toledo? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure, and I hate him. He went out with the guys. Oh my god. We haven't seen him for a long time, many years ago he used to come visit with his family, but since his parents passed, we have hardly heard from him again. My little friend Dante is back. Isabella shouts excitedly, I roll my eyes. Ah. Now you are also going to steal my friends from me. Do you know where they were going? I think to the old town, they are going to ride their horses and do boy stuff, they said they would go to see a horse that Mr. Rick has for that guy. 
We have to go, they will surely go to the plaza first, and we cannot lose them, put on something nice, Elizabeth. I don't want to go chase that asshole. Oh come on, it's not for a view, not even for me, it's for Andrea, you know she loves Harry. Now come on, put on something nice. Ah, uh, okay. I roll my eyes and hang up. I think there are things about Pablo, Harry, Isabella and Andrea that I still don't know. I guess the only way to know what is happening is to go to the plaza with them. I put on a skirt, some high black boots and a white blouse. I grabbed the gun I had taken from my father and hid it under the elastic of my skirt, just in case, and then got downstairs to wait for my friends. I guess we will walk, it is not far from here. Bye dad, I'll go out with the girls. Be very careful, sweetie. Dad, you know nobody knows how to take care of themselves better than I do in this town. Don't underestimate people, Elizabeth. Come on dad, you know it's true, I learned from the best. Well I can't argue against that. Go ahead sweetie, just take care of yourself. Yes dad, see you later. I leave the hacienda and look at Andrea and Isabella in the distance. Ready? Not that I want to see that idiot again, it's already enough to have him at home, but all right, just because I love you guys. And I won't miss Andrea drooling over Harry for anything. Let's go. I put my hand over the gun and walk to their side. In Paradise Dante's Pav The more we advance through those dark streets, the more I couldn't help to remember what happened a few years ago, I stopped keeping track of the time for the sake of my sanity. How long has it been? Harry and Pablo look at each other, they know what I'm talking about. Five men. I nod and take out a pack of cigarettes, I light one while I keep walking in silence. We heard you recovered your territory in Italy. I nod. Yeah. Not completely, but most of it. Even though the one that interests me now is the one in Germany, I've been working with someone there, long story. I like it here a lot, but let's go one step at the time. That's great. After what happened, we did not imagine that you were going to enter fully into this Dante. It can be very dangerous, especially for you. Everyone thinks you died. Ha. Huh. Well, I'm dangerous too. Five years on my own were enough for me to become as lethal as I've ever been. I look at the horizon at the end of the street, many thoughts cross trough my mind. I can't believe I am here, and that I haven't walked through these streets for so long, it somehow feels like it was yesterday, even though a lot of things have changed since. We kept walking until we finally could see Mr. Rick's ranch. By the way guys, is anyone living in my old house? The Moretti's. Things got worse when the Rodriguez family collapsed, well, for everyone but those fuckers. They took over their territories and occupied your old house. Nobody wants to enter their domain now, the fields are too divided. Hmm. I see. Dot how is your mother, Harry? Ha ha. You already know Mrs. Angela Marquez, nothing can hurt her, not even bullets. I'm glad bud. My mom missed her a lot when we moved to Norway, it's always hard to be away from friends and family, but tea was the best for us. And you know, dot one gets used to it, but you never stop wondering what could have been if you could have stayed. Hum, I bet. And how about you, Pablo? How are your parents doing? They're good. Well, busy haha. -ha. We've been having clashes some with rival gangs, especially with the Italians, they want to force their conditions on us, you know it used to be your dad who knew how to keep them in check. Things have changed a lot since then, Dante. Ha. They'll be the same again as soon as I am back in the game and show those Italians who's the boss. That whore. Sabina won't get away with what she did. You said it bro, she betrayed the wrong family. My mom trusted her, that fucking bitch. She is gonna pay. Mark my words. I'm sure you'll take care of her. At the right time. Do your mother's people still control Las Vegas? Yes. Fortunately my aunt took over and recovered those territories after the chaos that broke out that night. I spoke with her some weeks before coming here, and she told me that the territories are ours and they would like me to go there and help command the whole thing, but you know. 
I still don't feel ready for that, I had to go come back here first. I can't live in peace until I recover everything that was taken from us. For that, I know I'm ready. That's why I'm here. Sabina is going to regret leaving me alive. My friends just kept walking with a serious expression, they knew I meant that with all my might, and also, they knew what it would mean, it was not going to be an easy task all of the contrary, hell would break loose when the moment arrives, but no matter what, I knew they were as determined as me to finally get payback for what happened five years ago. We arrived at the ranch. Hey, long time no see Mr. Rick. The old man frowns, then smiles. Dante. Oh wow, is it really you? I can't believe you are here. In flesh and bone haha. -ha. How have you been Mr. Rick? Well you know, surviving. What happened to your other horses? I remember you used to have like 20 of them here. He looks at me unhappily. The more ready. I had no choice, they are protected by the Italians now, and they took them as payment for letting me keeping my land. They do whatever they want nowadays. Sons of bitches. But it doesn't matter, Dante, at least I'm alive, unlike many people who resisted. Ah. Anyways, I have something for you, son, come inside. We walked to the stables, where there were a few horses left. Before it happened, what you already know what I am talking about. Your father had given me a couple of horses, I have been raising them and crossed them with the strongest and fastest breeds, and here I have the first result. A cross between an English mare and an Arab stallion. An English thoroughbred, it's beautiful. And he is the only fully black one in town, I promised your father that he would be yours when he was ready. We call him the Black Bolt. 3. Wow. Really magnificent. Thanks Mr. Rick, it's a beautiful horse. I'll proudly take him with me. And by the way, don't worry about your horses anymore, you'll have them back after I shoot those bastards out of this town. They will have to run back to the fucking dumpsters they crawled from. They will probably feel better there. This place is ours, it has always been owned by the Ferrati and their people, and I'll make sure to remind them why. Well I can't deny it, I don't like the sound of that haha. -ha. Just be very careful boy. They are very dangerous people. Since they took over, there hasn't been a day when blood hasn't run down these streets. I nod with my head and get on the horse. So, are we ready to hit the fair or what? Thank you Mr. Rick, I will see you around. I'll take care of this bad boy. Take care guys. Have fun. We passed by Pablo and Harry's horses on our way to the plaza, where the largest fair in town was located. It is quite a tradition here, it is celebrated on the last Saturday of November, like today, November 26. We entered the square and all the people were looking at us, or well, to tell the truth they were looking at me. They know who I am, where I come from, and why I left, but the only advantage I have is that they don't know why the hell I'm back. Over here, Dante. We have to leave the horses there. I nod as we enter the stable where I would be forced to leave my new precious stallion. A man looks at me, very attentive, so much it is uncomfortable, I almost feel like a Hollywood star. I don't like it, it will be hard to be discreet. And the hardest thing, I have to behave and do everything I can so not to end up throwing a fight. I know who you are, you are the son of Salvatore Ferrati. He says smiling, I nod. Yes, it's me. Dante. The heir to the empire, welcome home, Mr. Ferrati. Well, thanks. I get off the horse and walk out with Harry and Pablo. We head to the square, where I see so many gorgeous women that I can't help but mischievously smile. Wow, is this really the Toledo Fair? Cause to me, it looks like paradise. That depends on how you see it. Hey, Dante. Isn't your birthday tomorrow? Look at that, you did remember the date your friend was born, Harry. I laugh. Of course I did, Dante, I mean you will be twenty fucking five years old tomorrow. I know. Well, that means we have a perfect excuse to celebrate, let's go get some drinks and get this started. We came for that, didn't we? We'll have the best fucking night, boys. 
We went into the fair, where we had several drinks. I haven't had as much fun in years. I haven't realized how much I missed my boys. Dante. I turn. Isabella. My beloved friend, now a woman, throws herself into my arms, I welcome her. Wow, you're already a man, just look at you. Well, you are not left behind, look at you, I almost didn't recognize you. How old were you when I left? Fifteen. Great. Wow, I can't stop staring, look how beautiful you are. Oh come on, I'm here Dante, don't say that about little sister. Shut up Pablo, you know that I love this girl as if she were my own sister. Oh don't get all sentimental, Dante. I can't believe how handsome you have become. Said my friend with her innocent smile. Hey Dante, it's been a while. Andrea, how are you? Good, how are you? Can't complain Andrea, can't complain at all. The situation hadn't given me the opportunity to think about how uncomfortable it would be to see her. Now, after five years, after what happened, her eyes filled with tears. She hugs me. I missed you. It wasn't the same after you left. I had to, it was the safest thing to do, but I'm here now. As I hugged her, I could see Elizabeth behind, she rolled her eyes as soon as I looked at her. It's okay, I know I was rude to her, even though she wasn't nice either. I am so glad to see you again Dante, hey, are you still so fast at running? Ha ha. I think you know, when I have a good reason to do it, no one can beat me. Shall we go for a drink? Sure. Don't think I forgot that it's your birthday at midnight. Andrea smiles at me. Wow, you really love me. Oh come on Dante, you know we all love you. I smile. I know, let's go get some drinks. I walk while hugging Andrea, but I stop when I realize that the feisty one behind us is not walking. Are you coming? She tilts her head. Come Elizabeth, it will be fun says my beautiful friend as she heads towards her and tries to reach her hand. I follow Andrea and loosen my grip so she can go with her. We're going to have a good time. I'm sure we will. I say and then smile. Let's dance. Elizabeth's Pav. We got to one of the bars nearby, it was uncomfortable to see how pleased everyone was with the stranger's presence, while I was completely the opposite, I know we started on the wrong foot but ah, he started. I don't know what happened exactly, I really have no idea, but they seemed to keep a much bigger secret than I can imagine, and apparently talking about the matter was forbidden. So how's everything in Ireland, my dude? I've heard things are fine but I have not been there these last few months. Why not? I've been traveling and meeting new places. Recently, Tokyo, with some of my father's old friends. Takara, Nihongo, or Hanashimas Ka. I raise my eyebrows when I hear Harry speak in Japanese. The stranger laughs. Tozen Yujin, Sukunakutomo Tabimono Tabiru or Tanomu Kodo or Manabamasu. Shit. That was Japanese. I raise both eyebrows. My father also told me that you had been in Germany. Ich war da aber nur ein paar Monate. And how about Italy? Your father was from the wasn't he? Ha ha. Right. But I haven't been there in a while. For a volta che passo in Italy, la cosa nostra remains the same though. My friends laugh, ah fine I have to accept it, the boy in the suit impresses me and I said it. They kept drinking, and it seemed that the stranger had a taste for expensive liquors, and the regional music playing in the background. Everything seemed very chill, until a song that my dad loved was started playing. I raised my eyebrows as I heard a scream from Andrea. Dante, you have to dance with me. What? No. He shakes his head. Oh come on, don't be so boring. Or is it that you forgot how to dance already? Ha, sweetheart, I wouldn't forget that even if they wiped my memory. Then come dance with me. He sure only dances to Irish music now, like those leprechauns in movies, and wearing those cute little green suits. Ha ha. Make fun of it but yes, I can dance to Irish music, but also, I can still show you how to dance to this. 
He had no choice but to dance with Andrea, who by the way at 17 was way more outgoing and flirty than me. I'm 20. I stared at them, for some reason I couldn't keep my eyes away from the scene. The way that they danced, how happy Andrea was with him, the way he moved, he even looked nice. Just seeing him dance like that made me want to do it, not that I want to dance with that jerk, but I got to admit he makes it look fun. Ellie, look at that. What is going on between those two ha ha ha? Anyone would say there is a spark between them. I gulp and drink what they had offered me. Annoyed. Calm down Isabella, they're just dancing. HHM, wouldn't Andrea want to dance with Harry? Well, Dante knows how to dance as well, and well, he has always been the best at that. Pablo, shall we join the dance? You don't have to ask me twice. They all continued dancing, and after a few minutes, Harry asked Dante to allow him to dance with Andrea. He kindly agreed. He was about to sit where he was before, but then for some reason, he approaches me instead. Are you going to tell me that you don't dance to this music? Indeed I don't. Why? If you were born here, aren't you proud to be Spanish? The fact that I am proud to be Spanish does not mean that I have to enjoy what the rest does. Yeah, but it doesn't hurt to dance. Come on, it will be fun. It doesn't, but no, I don't even like this song. Oh, come one, I saw you moving to the beat, plus, the song is what matters the least. You know, I have been to many places, many countries, and believe me, there's nothing like this music. I got to admit it, I have a weak spot for Spain. You're a big mouth, where in here have you been? Malaga, Sevilla. I went to take photos there last year, it's kind of a hobby. Wow. I thought your favorite hobby was shooting people. I smile in a sarcastic way, point four. Well, haha. If people don't do anything to me, I don't have to shoot them. Don't you think? That doesn't mean you don't like doing it. Do you like what you do, Dante? What makes you think that what you do is okay or correct? He laughs and looks to one side. You know, I don't think it's the best path to take, but it's the one I've always known, I know I can't be a good person if I belong to the Mafia, and to be honest, I can't say that I don't like what I do, I would be a fucking liar. How about you, do you like this life? Well, I do like to shoot people. I raise an eyebrow. Testing him. I noticed, you were going to shoot me this morning. I wasn't really going to. No. Not at all, you know. If I was going to shoot you, you could never have predicted it. I'm not one to give warnings. If I were to do it, nobody would know where it came from. But don't worry, it's not gonna happen. If I did, I shoot and it's over. I would rather have some fun first. He smiles proudly as if he had been my mentor, and tilts his head as he puts a cigarette in his mouth and lights it. Interesting. I wasn't really expecting that, but I like it. I almost believed you. Quite honestly, I did not like this life at all at the beginning, but well, life has led me to understand my place in this world, and in the worst ways. A different song that I didn't know started playing. Dante looked at me. Don't even dream about it, stranger.4. Come on, I don't think you came here to watch others are having fun, come on, don't be such a party pooper, you're just making the world hate you even more than it should, get up, let's join the fun. He got up, stood to the side of me and held out his hand, he looked at me with a raised eyebrow. Shit. I don't know why, but I take his hand. Is that how easy he has it, to get women, to end up in his bed? He led me down the hall and stood right in front of me. I've never danced to this so, show me what to do. I tell him in embarrassment, but I disguise my embarrassment in annoyance. Okay, place your hand here. He puts my left hand on his shoulder. And the other one, here. He takes my hand and places it on his own hand. Like this, see? It's not that hard. I'll guide you, just try not to step on my foot, please. Shut up. I didn't want to dance in the first place, so now you have to take the consequences. He laughs very close to me. Once I have him close, I get drunk on his perfume, the idiot smells like some expensive perfume, he has good taste. He begins to move, first slowly and then faster and faster. 
Wow, I can't believe I'm dancing to this. You are doing well. How long ago did you arrive to Spain? About three months. Point four. Did you grow up in here? No, in Madrid and then moved to LA when I was 15. I lived there since, but my mother told me to come with dad. She wanted him to have me under control. I had to leave LA all of a sudden. Something happened. And I guess I made more enemies than we already had. Since I came here, I have led some operations to recover some territories that later I learned were originally from the Ferrati, who turned out to be your family. Did you grow up here? No, but close, somewhere between Toledo and Castilla. My dad was born in there, even though he was raised in Italy, and that's how he got into the business. Did he meet your mother there? No, he met her in New York. She was the contact with our Irish associates, and my father was their contact in Spain, and that's how they fell in love. In the middle of bullets, drugs, and a lot of alcohol. My dad says they were very good people, decent and very kind. Yes, I like to think they were. I avoid Dante's face as I watch as some guy pulls Andrea just a few feet away from us. Dante realizes and turns to look. He immediately looks at him and tenses his expression. Wait here. No, Dante, wait. I follow behind him. Let go of her. And who the hell are you? That's none of your business. Let go of the girl now. Ha! Can someone tell me who the fuck is this clown who has the balls to talk to me like that? Oh shit! Healing. Elizabeth's pov. Dante, no. Not with him. This is the last time I tell you. Let go of the girl. Fuck off. I just want to dance with her. But she clearly doesn't want to. Let her go. Now. I approach Andrea, who looks at me fearfully. She shakes her head while I frown. I will dance with him, Dante. It's okay. Don't get so wound up. You heard her. I take Andrea by the hand and try to escape. When suddenly I feel him try to pull her again. I turn to him and slap him on the face so hard that it makes him bounce off and fall to the ground. Immediately, one of his thugs draws a gun and points me. I take my gun out and do the same, and so do Harry and Pablo. Well, well. I smile. As it looks like you have no idea who you just messed with, let me introduce myself. I'm Joseph Moretti. This son of a bitch is one of them. I purse my lips with a desire to unloaded my full cartridge on his chest. Well, Joseph, I'm Dante, Dante Ferrati. He says while he approaches with an extreme confidence and a serious look on his face. No fucking way. What a problem we have here, don't we, orphan? That makes my blood boil in a matter of seconds. I approach Moretti quickly and almost slap him again. But before I do, a fight breaks loose. Dante quickly approaches to stop me on my tracks and punches him in the face twice, very hard. He tries to defend himself, but Dante hits him brutally until he falls unconscious to the ground. Two of his people point at Harry and Pablo, who aim without fear, preventing them from shooting. Let's go. I take Andrea by the hand and leave the bar with her trembling in my arms. Dante's pov. Dante, you have to stop doing those things. I don't want them to kill you. I wasn't going to let that fucking idiot touch you, and don't argue with me. She walks angrily ahead of me. Just go home. I think that's enough fun for today. I will see you tomorrow, guys. Harry nods without saying more. We walk to the stable and take out our horses. Harry climbs in and takes Andrea. Pablo takes Isabella. I look for Elizabeth. In a way, she is my responsibility. I see her in the distance, walking down the street all by herself. I roll my eyes. Elizabeth, don't talk to me. You almost got us killed, you maniac. I wasn't going to let that jerk put his filthy hands all over her. Don't tell me it wasn't fun. Come on up, let's go. I didn't even come with you. But you're leaving with me. Get up. No, go to hell. Soon. Now come on, don't be so immature. Climb or I'll get off and make you climb. It will be worse. No, I already said no. I know the way, and I know how to take care of myself. 
I roll my eyes and I get off the horse. Elizabeth, do you know what my godfather is going to think if he sees me getting home on my new horse, all comfortable and then sees you arrive on foot, right? I don't fucking care. Actually, I'll tell him that you're an idiot, and that my spirit of survival told me that I had to be as far away from you as possible. I look at her, I hadn't realized how short she is compared to me. I smile devilishly. I tie a knot in the horse's rope and tie it to my hand, walking smoothly behind Elizabeth, and then grab her and carry her on my arms. Dante, don't be a bastard, put me down, my panties are showing, don't be or an idiot. Shut up already, you're so noisy, didn't your mom didn't teach you some manners? I tell her as she kicks and hits my back, I shake my head. Stop hitting me, apart from the fact that I'm not charging you for the trip, you're going to get all crazy? Put me down you son of a bitch you bastard, I'm going to mash you when you let me go, put me down, put me down now. Well yeah, maybe I'm a fucking bastard, but you will stay right there and stop moving like a monkey, we're almost there. You. I hate you Dante. And I can barely stand you but here I am, still carrying you. At least you will serve me as a good exercise. 2. I'm not a fucking weight from your gym Dante, put me down, help. I'm gonna scream until someone comes. Yeah, let's see who dares to mess with me. Shut up now, you're too noisy. After some struggling she finally got tired and stood still while I kept walking along the dark path that was only lit by the moon. I remember how many times I walked this path conveniently and inconveniently as well. You know how to get to the hacienda, right? I know Toledo, like the palm of my hand, Elizabeth. My head begins to bring memories memories that cause me pain. I tilt my head, sigh and begin to whistle point one. Oh fuck me Dante, are you kidding me? I continued without any problem. She stopped grumbling after a few minutes. When I saw that we were close, I put her down, but I didn't stop whistling. She stayed behind me, I listened to her footsteps behind, it's almost as if she likes what she hears, she doesn't want to listen, but she can't help it. We finally arrived to the hacienda, so I forced myself to end the song. What a good song son, it brings memories. How was the fair? My godfather notices the blow I have in the face. Dad. She hurriedly approaches her dad, pulling her skirt off and pointing at me. This idiot got into a fight with one of the Moretti, but not with Marcos, not with Victor, and no, not with Paul, of course not. She kept going on and on, look at her, how funny, it even looks like she is giving a public speech. He went to beat up no one more and no one less other than Joseph Moretti. She slaps me on the arm, Joseph Moretti. She gives me another blow on the arm, my godfather crosses his arms and looks at me. Hmm. I see. Well son, what do you have to say? Just that I would beat the shit out of him again, if I had him in front of me now. And that I regret not having given him one last punch. Dante, did you know who that man was? Of course, he introduced himself. That jerk was pulling and groping Andrea, and I didn't let him go on. We weren't looking for trouble godfather. I can't apologize, because I would do it again. Elizabeth opens her mouth, her expression is everything, at another time I would laugh at her, but this is serious. Dad, you know how much it has cost us to stand up against those pigs and avoid a clash just for this one. She pushes me, to ruin it and make a disaster in a few minutes. I hope you reprimand him for that. Well, all I can say is, well done Dante. No asshole is going to boss us around, you should have shot the son of a bitch right in that moment. Someone had to teach them respect. She opened her mouth and eyes too wide, she held her breath, she was indignant. I was having the best time of my life. I didn't lack the will, godfather. But dad. Elizabeth, apart from the fact that you have a young man who would have protected you with his life if necessary, you act all rude and ungrateful. I'm so disappointed. Well done son, don't worry, I know you did what you had to. End of the matter. Now you better go to rest, we have a hell of a party prepared for your birthday, tomorrow. Wow. Really? That sounds great. Thank you godfather. Oh, and Elizabeth. 
Go grab the first aid kit and heal Dante's blow. What? Dad, but why me? She sputtered. I love how funny this is. Because I'm your father and I'm ordering it. Heal Dante's blow and that's it, it's the least you can do. I'm going to sleep. She bit her teeth and nodded, annoyed, I stayed at a safe distance, lest she ends up completing Joseph's task. She walked ahead of me. Come, or do you want me to carry you? I rolled my eyes and followed her. Sit down, you're too tall and I can't reach you, don't you see? I sat down. She took out the medicine cabinet and began to heal the blow. Ah. Don't be so rough. I said holding her hand. Shut up. I wasn't the one who sent you to act like an animal there. Now stay still and be quiet, I don't want to talk to you. She cured the blow, I for some stupid reason could not take my eyes off her. When everything was ready, she closed the box, put it in its place, and headed her way to the corridor where my room is. Apparently Elizabeth's is five rooms from mine. Good night. I mockingly said. Fuck you. Thanks to you, they will want to shoot me whenever they see me. She slams the door and I exhale. I don't regret it, none of my friends will be mistreated in my presence. I look at my phone, I haven't checked it all day, I had texts from several girls and one from Harry. How are you brother? A hard blow in the snout but just that, you? Yeah, I know. I'm fine. Andrea fell asleep already, thank God. She was very scared. Can you stay with her? Tomorrow my godfather will throw a party for me, it will be better if you could you bring her, I don't want her to be by herself. Sure brother, I will stay here. By the way Nick told me that tomorrow Johnny and Andrew will arrive from Sevilla. I smile. My cousins, the jerks I love so much. Thanks for telling me. Good news at last. Good night bro, if anything happens call me, it'll run over there okay? Sure brother, happy birthday by the way. Thanks. I threw the phone close to my bed, least I don't hear it in case something happened. I took off my shoes, I am used to always be all suited up, but that might not be the best way to dress around here, so I guess I will have to find something that fits, plus. I take off my shirt and then my pants, I like to sleep in my underwear. I throw myself into bed and it takes longer for the pants to hit the ground than for me to deeply fall asleep. I hate you. Elizabeth's Pov. I was awakened by the volume of some scandalous music, who dares playing it that loud on a Sunday morning. Sigh. The music comes from the gym. I want to kill him. I got up and didn't bother to put on my slippers, I walked to the gym annoyed, it's seven in the morning, this man has no notion of respect. I walked into the gym and electronic music was blasting. Dante was hanging from a tube upside down, he did sit-ups against gravity, once down he turned his body to the left, then to the right, and then went up until he touched the tip of his toes, he was very focused, he didn't see me enter. 298. He went up once more, 299, 300. He came down from where he was hanging like a bat, and began to move to the rhythm of the music and singing, he can sing, it shows, he turned around, and I fixed my gaze on his neck, he had a scar that covered almost his entire back, my skin prickled, I gulped. What happened to him? I clear my throat while he was still lost into his music, which by the way was pretty good. I never thought he had such taste. He is wearing black pants, he does not have a shirt on as you may have figured. I stopped looking at his body, and then I sighed before speaking to him. Hey. He keeps humming and lifting weights. Is he lifting 40 pounds with one arm? Hey. 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 I tap his back with my index finger, he turns immediately. What? Can you tell what the fuck you're doing? Working out, why? The music. It's blasting. I have classes tomorrow at 7, I want to sleep as much as possible, at least today, if it doesn't bother you. Ah. I also have classes tomorrow at 7, do you always get up in such a bad mood? I thought people from your town were livelier. Well we're not in my town. The place you love goes where you go. 
Oh, for the love of God, just put on some headphones, then go deaf if you want to. I cannot concentrate with headphones, and I still have 15 miles left to run. Excuse me? I have to run 15 miles. Nobody runs 15 miles after doing 300 crunches against gravity, handsome. Wait, did I just say handsome? Do you think this body will be kept like this by itself? Go to your room, pretty, get under your sheets, put on some headphones and smile, and do not interrupt me or I'll cool off. He gets on the treadmill and turns it on, level 9, 30 degrees of inclination, is he serious, this guy has the condition of an athlete, he runs non-stop. I fool around the gym for a while, curious to see if he wasn't just trying to impress me. What are you staring at? He stops. I have to admit it, I am very curious. I am waiting for you to stop or, or maybe fall, it is always important to know what happened, it makes it easier for the paramedics and the police to decipher the cause of death. I joked. You can stop already, handsome. Nobody runs 20 kilometers after the routine you just did. I said looking at the notebook I found nearby, with his whole routine written up. You don't know me, I always do the 15 miles without stopping. He keeps running while the next song starts playing, it takes me 20 minutes to see that he is not even tired, he sweats like crazy though, the sweat runs gloriously down his back. Fuck Dante, do you really have to do this? I want to sleep. Good night. He says softly as he continues running. Motherfucker. Do you kiss your daddy with that little mouth? I leave the gym angrily in fury, I fucking hate him. I was going straight to my room when I ran into Isabella and Pablo. Up so early? It's that bastard's fault, he won't let me sleep. He always gets up early to work out, you know, he likes to be in shape. Well, if he keeps fucking with me, that shape will be in vain, because I will end up shooting him. Give him time, Elizabeth, maybe he needs to clear his mind. Clearly. I'll go see him. I need to know what time everything is going to start. Pablo heads to the gym, Isabella looks at me. Did you see him working out? I nod. Yes, he is not bad, he has a good condition. I said putting a lock of hair behind my ear, I looked somewhere else, I crossing my arms. I am glad that he is doing well after the accident. I raise my eyebrows. What accident? We fell silent until we heard them chatting in the hallway and approaching. Good morning, Isabella. Don't come too close, I am sweating, I will take a shower now so we can go for Harry and Andrea, my cousins are coming here soon. Oh nice. I haven't seen them for years, that's awesome man. Yeah. Where are they coming from? Sevilla, I suppose it would be great to receive them in a good way so I'll postpone the workout. Anyways, they'll be right back, gotta take a quick shower. He dries the sweat from his chest and neck as he walks, he seems not to want to hide that huge and bizarre scar on his back that is impossible not to notice. Isabella and Pablo look at each other, I guess they know what happened. After a few minutes Dante appears, dressed like a local wood. He really looks like a normal civilian, a very handsome one. He is wearing a tight black t-shirt that shows off his biceps, a pair of black jeans and to my surprise, he has put on some Converse shoes. I raise my eyebrows, wow, the stranger packed some decent outfits. Let's go. I was thinking that it would be good if we left the horses here today, I thought I would bring your old friend here. I was curious and I looked outside, it was in stunning black sports car. Dante saw it wistfully. No way, I thought they took it as well. No man, we would never have left them, you loved this car, I fixed what was necessary, I hope you don't mind. Not at all, wow, it looks just like it did five years ago, thanks Pablo. It was in your old house, we got it back two years after all the mess happened. Yeah. Who controls the police now? Us. Interesting, just us. It's complicated, but mostly us and the Moretti. Just what I thought. Ah, two don't think I can go for Sabina yet, not without fixing a couple things first. I don't know, Dante. This is your decision, you know that we will go where you allow us to follow you. He nods several times, his mind has gone to another place, I can feel it, dot and see it. 
He gets on the car. It seems that Isabella is staying and only Pablo will go. She says goodbye to them and enters the hacienda again. Where are they going so early? His cousins from Sevilla are coming. He's going to pick them up. My father says, I see, Dad, when is he leaving? My father stares at me. He is going to stay as long as it is necessary. Dad, I can't stand him. I can't stand you and here you are, so behave yourself, don't make me get you on a plane to Tokyo. No, Dad, I don't even speak Japanese and I really like it here. Okay then, if you don't want to be there on your own, control yourself and behave Elizabeth, I won't repeat it again. I sigh annoyed as I watch my father walk to the kitchen. Did you know that Dante's father was your father's best friend? He probably feels like he is in debt with them, not just with Dante, but with Dante's family, my father feels it too, and Andrea's dad surely does too. They did not only lose their friend that day, they lost so much more. I was just about to ask about it when Andrea appeared with Harry, I raised my eyebrows in shock, Isabella laughs, they came together on his motorcycle. Good morning, girls. Hey, Harry. Where is Dante? He went to pick up his cousins with Pablo, to the airport, I imagine. I don't know if they still have their jet. They used to, but not anymore, they had to sell it after the Moretti took over. Let's just wait here until they arrive. I roll my eyes. If he doesn't leave the easy way, I will make him do it my way. Cheers. Dante's Pav. My car was indeed the same, it looked just like I remembered it from five years ago. And that was the problem. I could still remember her feet up on the dash, and me looking at her, contemplating her beauty as she sat by my side with her beautiful blonde hair being blown by the wind. I grabbed the wheel with both hands and swallowed hard, one day I will stop being so stupid, and I will finally understand that there are wounds that never get to heal, no matter how hard I try. We arrived at the area where we always used to meet, Johnny and Andrew were in their cars waiting, arms crossed. Dante. We knew you'd come. I always go when family calls. Look who is not all suited up for once. I smile and shake my head, I'm so exited to see these two that I almost feel like I am about to burst into tears. How have you been? I hug Johnny and Andrew at the same time. Missing you, brother. Well, I'm here, you don't have to cry for me anymore. I smiled a little. Let's go. They got into their cars, Johnny drives a red Corvette and Andrew a gray Porsche, I can't help but laugh, I'm sure they have changed them year after year, but the model is the same as when I left and so are the colors, these idiots never change. It's great that you are back, Dante, things were not the same after you left, although we knew that it was the best for you, we also know that it was not your will. Johnny whispered. I know, I hope I don't have to leave again, not like that, I see that things are more calm now but still they're far from what they used to be. I came to put an end to this guise. And after I get my revenge, I'm willing to drop my weapons in the name of peace if necessary. They both stay silent. They clearly weren't expecting that. Well, at least that's the plan. Things have changed a lot, and they're much worse than it may seem like. Most things happen under the table, each week more and more people appear dead in the plazas and in the streets, the dispute for territories has gone bad, it's not gonna be easy said Pablo as he looked through the window. I close my eyes and smile. You know I would be devastated if something happened to you? Haha, ha, of course you would. But it is what it is Dante after all, they raised us to be ready for when people we love leaves us. You know, my brother appreciated and respected you a lot, he would have given his life to fight by your side, and I will do the same, because you're my brother and because he would have wanted it that way. Thanks brother. I owe your family a lot Pablo, a lot, and there is not a day I don't miss your brother, he was one of my best friends. And because of that, I won't let anything happen to you nor any of my friends, I don't want to be in that position ever again. By the way, just so that you can prepare yourself. Rose has been here for a month, they say she knew you would come in and came here in advance to meet you as soon as she heard. There is no doubt, where Dante goes he leaves his mark and seems like it doesn't fade away, even after years have passed. I smiled. 
On the other hand, the Bianco now know that they are not welcome in our territories. They are no longer part of the group. We are running out of friends. With the Casso, the Ferrati, the Marinos, the Rodriguez, and the Montreal on our side is more than enough when it comes to friends. What about in the rest of Europe? You know that Hiroto is with us, and don't forget the Ashcrofts. I had the pleasure of meeting a Bratva from here in Italy, very nice guy. They were somehow linked with the Rodriguez, so if we need people, they would support us. I recovered Russian territories thanks to him, who, by the way, disguises his business as well. And of course, we can always count with the Brants form Germany. My man Frank is always ready for some action. If you were talking about who I think you are, I know for a fact he is. He smiles. By the way, happy birthday, dude. Damn, 25 already. Ha ha. Thanks, guys. Johnny and Andrew drive behind me. We arrive at the hacienda a few minutes later. We parked the cars outside. There's a lot of people getting everything ready for the party in the inside. Johnny, Andrew, nice to see you boys. Look at you, you've grown so much. Mr. Raul, what a pleasure to greet you. Johnny says to my godfather, they greet each other with a manly hug. Mr. Raul, the family is very grateful that you are supporting my cousin in this. Thank you a lot, in our name. Don't even mention it, son. You know I would do anything for the Ferratis, and even more if it's my godson, right? Yes. I said nodding as I sneakily looked at the place. How about the display I'm putting on for your party? Well, it's very impressive, but maybe this is going a little bit out of hand, godfather. That's what it's about. Dante. Andrea, you're here so early. Yeah, Harry brought me, he stayed home with me last night, how cute, right? That little fucker better, if not I would make him dance to the beat of my bullets tonight. I say laughing. Are you better now? Yes, but I don't want you to get in trouble because of me again, Dante. Don't say that, you know I would do anything for you, I love you so much, Andrea. Can't I fucking love you or what? Yes you can, and I love you too, Dante. We hug. Well, since we are almost complete, let's eat something or what? Says my godfather. We laugh, and suddenly, someone covers my eyes, nobody moves. I can only tell, that it is a woman. Well, if you wanted to confuse me you got it, I'm clueless. You are not even trying. I recognize that voice. I turn immediately and hug her. Sunny. How are you? Why didn't you tell me you were coming? I hug her again. I wanted it to be a surprise, greetings from the Migda by the way, Poland misses you. Sunny. She looks at me, puts her hands on my face, and her eyes begin to shine. You look just like him. I could not be half as good as he was Sunny, do not flatter me, I have not done anything to deserve it. I know what you have done, it has cost you pain, blood and broken bones, Dante, but Pietro would be very proud of you, I know it. Thanks, Sonny. Sonny, welcome home. Says my godfather. Thank you, sir. I'm happy to be here. Elizabeth looks at Sonny with annoyance. I think everyone here understands what she is talking about except her. We enter the house again where it already smells like perfectly cooked beef. Well, I'm starving. I said with my hand on my stomach. I was about time, right? We sat down to eat. Sunny sat next to me, I took her by the hand before Elizabeth's frowned face. What's wrong with her? How have you been, Dante? Good Sunny, surviving. You know, our group reigns in Poland. We are just awaiting orders from the boss. She pointed at me with the cutlery. Sunny, I'm not ready yet. I have yet to recover what was lost here, and then, go to Rome to have a talk with Sabina, of the kind that ends with one of my bullets in her head. Sabina? Dante, that's very dangerous, you know that there are only a few people who would dare to enter her domains and make it out alive. I know, but I would be discreet, enter with those few and be ready for whatever awaits. But let's not talk about that now. How is little Zack? Growing up very fast, I would have loved to bring him so you could see him, he looks just like your brother. That must be terrible for him. 
We laugh. The Godfather hits a glass with his fork and makes us look at him. It looks like he wants to say something. Well, I think it's my turn to speak, especially in Pablo's absence. I have never missed him as much as when I have to speak in public. We laughed. Well, as you know, we are gathered here to celebrate Dante's 25th birthday. That name doesn't need an introduction for any of us here. We all know who he is and what he had to go through to mail it to this point, and it is a strong pain in my heart to think that five years ago we almost lost him. I can only say that Salvatore and Riona would be very proud if they could see you. You have fought like a true champion in spite of everything that has been taken from you. And now that you are here, and that you have come to reclaim what belongs to you, all I can say is that we are with you for whatever you need, and we look forward to seeing this organization return to its original state, with its legitimate heir at the head. We are a family and we all will be by your side, no matter what. Happy birthday Dante, cheers, we all repeat the phrase. Thank you Godfather. He nods to me, we eat the delicious meal that they have prepared in my honor. After we finish, Sonny is the first to offer me a gift. Sonny, you shouldn't have. Of course I had to, open it. I open a box that fits almost perfectly in the palm of my hand. I find a watch. But not just any watch. He was going to give it to you on your next birthday, he said you were ready to wear a watch of this kind. I looked at the elegant silver-colored watch, I had seen it in several hands, two of them my father's and my brother's, I sighed. I looked at the engraving that surrounded the watch from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock, pecunia, potestatum et secundum. I have that phrase tattooed on my arm, in fact we all have it in some part of our body, it would be impossible not to know what it means. Wow. What a gift Sonny, Pecunia, Potestatum et Secundum says my godfather as he raises the glass, we all raise the glass, and repeat the phrase, I look out of inertia at Elizabeth. Why do I keep doing that? Tequila. Elizabeth's Pav. My brother James has one of those watches. I suppose they only give it to the elite group of the criminal society in which we live. Dante seems absorbed in his thoughts, he looks at his watch, as if he had been given a crown that he does not think he deserves, he does not even put it on. Well, if he is not worthy of carrying that watch, better not to put it on. The pretty blonde looks at him, pats him on the shoulder and says something while he fixes his gaze on the watch, she asks him something, and he answers, he shakes his head and puts the watch in the box, I think he's getting sentimental or maybe it was because of those seven shots of tequila he's had. The blonde hugs him, and I don't know why I have a feeling of emptiness in my stomach. I think it's because I don't like to see them this way, I rather see them miles away from me. I smile hypocritically. Hey, Elizabeth. I stare at Andrew. Hey. Andrew sits next to me while good music plays, that's why I have endured. Let me guess. You do not understand anything of what is happening here. Honestly. I didn't know you had such a special cousin. You don't like him at all, do you? He laughs. Well, it is just that until he came it was only Pablo, Harry, Isabella, Andrea and me, and now it turns out that he is part of everything. Does it bother you? I cannot stand him. That's all. I said as I drank a shot. He's not a bad person, you haven't got to know him. I'm not interested in doing it, he's too arrogant to be my friend. Should no one surpass Elizabeth the Diva? Shut up. You know, even if it doesn't look like it, he has been through a lot, when his brother died three years ago, I wondered how Dante had managed to bear so much pain. Did he lose his brother? He lost everything, Elizabeth, everything. So if you don't like him and you're not going to try to get to know him, at least have respect for him, and don't make those faces. He got up to stop answering my questions, then I looked at Dante more thoughtfully than ever. He was strange, different from the others, I guess that's why he doesn't fit anywhere, he's a very mysterious person. He sings. He dances. He shoots. He can act like a gentleman, but also like the biggest thug when the occasion calls for it. Where the hell did this dude came from? Let's dance Ellie. Come on. 
Andrea pulls hard on my arm and I end up on the floor dancing. It is electronic music, my favorite. I never thought that this kind of music would ever be heard at these parties. After several drinks I go crazy, I end up dancing with Harry, with Pablo, even with the reserved John. Dante did not stop drinking either, he took drink after drink while the blonde, worried, told him to stop, he only shook his head. Then, in my moment of alcoholism, and given its high degree of concentration, I went up to him and hit the drink in his hand. Hey stranger, stop drinking and dance. I pulled his arm, we were both drunk. He stared at me and whispered the lyrics of the song. They were dirty. You are such a perv, don't say that kind of stuff. We're dancing to it, what difference does it make? I laughed. It was crazy, the more time passed, the more it felt like if the rest of those present, which were quite a few, disappeared and there were only the legendary Dante and me. Don't think I'm dancing with you because I like you, in fact I hate you, but I'm drunk and my brain isn't thinking well. So don't get too exited. It's that, or maybe you don't hate me as much as you think. You are unbearable. Why would I even like you? You're right, I'm not good at many things, I understand. He tells me seriously. You drank the more concentrated tequila, didn't you? Take it easy, try this one, it is better. My father had left after dinner. There were many of his friends inside the hacienda, while we were partying in the back garden. What are you doing? I began to dance very close to him, without stopping. You are a very good dancer. I know, you too. You better not fall. He held me very close to him to help my stumbling, and I could feel his strong grip on my waist. Our gazes connected, and suddenly we were staring at each other as we danced. He pulled me even closer, and then I was right under his mouth. Shit. I could see those lips, those sexy lips that were so fucking tempting for some reason. What the hell was this feeling, dot why did I suddenly feel so weak when he pulled me close to him? I swallowed, I couldn't take it anymore, so without thinking much, I threw myself to his lips and kissed him passionately. His mouth felt so familiar to me, he grabbed me by my waist with one hand, while he put the other one over my cheek, we stopped to take a breath. E. Elizabeth. You wanted me to like you, didn't you? I kept kissing him and grabbed his hair until he lost his balance, and we both fell to the floor, we both laughed, and I got up and danced while he watched, he was drunk but definitely not as drunk as me. Can Irish women move like this Dante? I turned around in a sensual way and began to dance against him, he smiled so beautifully and shook his head. No one like you, long live Spain. He watched me dance, he even stopped me from falling twice, he got up and I stayed close to his mouth again. I better take you to your room. No, I don't want to go yet. Let's go grab more drinks instead. I pulled my arm, he grabbed me again so I didn't fall. Of course not Elizabeth, you're really drunk, come on let's go. No. I complained. Come on, if you fall. He approached me. Your panties are going to show and I don't think you want that. I opened my mouth wide. You are very right. Will you let me take you to your room or not? I put my hand over my forehead while looking down and nodded, I think it's a good idea, he carried me to my room in his arms, we stopped in the hall. You are a gentleman. I whispered in his ear while I kept moving in his arms. Stop moving Elizabeth, you're going to fall. I forced him to put me on the ground, we could still hear the music that was playing so I continued dancing, I threw myself to his lips again, I jumped on him, I wrapped my legs around his hips and slowly took off his shirt. You are so hot, strong and obnoxious. Elizabeth, you're drunk. Stop. Shut up you jerk, only I can tell if I'm drunk or not, just dance. I began to sway to the rhythm of the music, softly, I took his hands and intertwined them with mine. I like men like this, like you. I hit his bicep. Strong, smart, capable of everything, those who are heroes but do not wear a cape. I brush my nose against his chest and look at the tattoo, money, power and respect, in Latin. Elizabeth. What? I'm just looking at your pronounced pecs. I peck at him. Oh look, hard as steel. I tried to bury my finger, but I couldn't. Hard as steel indeed. 
Would you stop, woman? Be still for a second. Point one. His eyes were closed, I pulled him before he fell, he looked at me almost lost. I looked at the chain he had on, the face of a leopard, with two blue stones in his eyes. What is this? It's a leopard, just like my name, it means strength and endurance. So it's that why you're called Dante? Yes, I'm called Dante because I'm fast. And you know that I am. He tells me with his eyes closed, I take the chain off him and put it on. How do I look? I can't see. He whispered. Open your eyes, stupid. I can't. Ha ha, that happens to me when I drink too much, it makes me very sleepy. Dante, fast at everything, clearly because it's just three in the morning and he's already dying. I might be getting old, he jokes. My balance is pitiful, I smash my tits very close to his face and I curse. He's too drunk to even notice it. You really are sleepy haha. Go to sleep handsome, I give you permission, go on, god of the mafia. I kiss him one more time, I kiss him a lot, a lot, I caress him and kiss him, I take off my blouse and I keep kissing him passionately. I love it. It intoxicates me. God. I want so much more. Stop it, you little freak. He gets up and takes me in his arms, throws me on the bed. Sleep. Now. Yeah, but let's have some fun first. I throw a small pillow at him and it hits his head, I laugh, hiccup, and laugh some more. He stumbles out of my room, looks at me before turning off the light, I send him a kiss. Bye, you sexy fucker. Why do you have to be so fucking handsome, you idiot? I say slurring my words, he laughs and shakes his head. Good night, Elizabeth. Don't be a jerk. I point it out. Tell me something beautiful. I am telling you that you are very handsome, and you are going to leave just like that? Sleep now, beautiful Elizabeth. He rolls his eyes. Ah. I love you, you fucking bastard. Elizabeth. Do you love me too? Elizabeth, stop, you're too drunk. Tell me that you love me, do it or I'll shoot you, come on. Tell me that you love me like I love you, Mr. Dante Ferrati. I crooned. Ah. I love you, Elizabeth, I love you. So freaking much, I want you to be my wife, you're perfect, you're beautiful, I love you. Oh, that's better. Now get out, Prince of Toledo, sleep well, love of my life. I crooned to him again. Go to sleep before you fall. He nods and closes the door. I lick my lips, they taste delicious. That son of a bitch is very tasty. I shake my legs. Dante, I want to be your wife, marry you, in a palace with many horses, I want to be your queen, you fucking bastard. I laughed, I settled into bed. What the fuck have I done, I thought for a second while I smiled, and then, little by little I began to fall asleep, plus. The new one. Dante's Pov. My alarm went off at 5.30 and like few times in my life, I was having a hard time getting up, I had three hours of sleep at most. I got up like a zombie, my lip was swollen, I looked at myself in the mirror, a bite from Elizabeth. I smiled when I remembered the way she danced, I think we can get along better simply because of that, I'm not going to get it out of my head from now on, I can't stop smiling while taking a shower. I dress myself thinking about that soft skin that was almost mine last night, if it weren't for her condition, she was super drunk, I couldn't take advantage of it, it wouldn't be something a gentleman would do, Surely that would bother my father if he could see me. I got dressed for school, my godfather had left me a backpack, I hadn't noticed. It has everything I need to succeed in the college world, so here I go, ready for my last semester. I leave the room to meet an angry Elizabeth. Good morning. What did you say? She looks at me confused, it seems that the Elizabeth I first knew had eaten the Elizabeth from last night. Good morning. What about it is good? Well, at least we are alive. Barely, I have a terrible headache from the tequila last night. I approach, I want to hug her, she looks at me, terrified. What are you doing? I stand still, calculating what is happening and trying to figure if it is a joke. Nothing, just wanted to say good morning. 
Well, you already did, and I like how your voice better when it's heard from a distance. Elizabeth. You don't remember what happened yesterday, do you? She stares at me with her right eyebrow raised. I just remember that I danced with almost everyone, except for you, of course. I press my lips and sighed slowly, shit, she does not remember. I scratched my nose and after wiping off the same lips she was kissing desperately last night, I raised my index finger. Can you give me my chain back? I stay quiet, waiting for her to tell something. She remains standing, turning her back to me and then slowly looking at her neck. What the hell is this? Why is your fucking metal hanging from my neck? You took it from me last night. What? Shit. Take it. It looks like those they use for witchcraft. She gives me my medal as if it were a reptile moving between her hands, did you hear that? Yeah, it was my heartbreaking, and I didn't even know I still had one. No, my mom gave it to me. I said softly. How cute, but take it away from me, there you go. Damn it. I look at my medal and I put it on, I smell it, I can't believe that in so few hours it already smells like her perfume, I take my backpack and walk to the dining room. Good morning sir. Good morning, Rosalie. Tired. Hurt. Hurt. No, don't listen to me Rosalie, good morning. I sit in the dining room, where Elizabeth sits as far as possible from me, with both hands on her forehead. She looks at the food without any interest, she drinks a glass of water with some drops of lemon on it, she does not eat anything. Elizabeth, you're going to school with Dante today, I have to go and settle an issue along with Andrea's father, okay? Dad. I'm not asking you, you will go with him and that's it, see you in the afternoon son. Yes godfather, take care. He leaves the hacienda, Elizabeth looks at me angrily. Is that all you will eat, sir? Are you feeling well? I'm fine, Rosalie, by the way, you still have the best seasoning in the world. Thank you, sir. Have a great day at school. She says smiling. Thanks, Rosalie, let's go, Elizabeth. I say dryly, that's how a broken heart speaks. Yes, I'm going to get my things. Great. I wait for her until she comes out with her fancy bag, I don't feel like talking, I open the door for her to get in and she looks at me as if she was surprised, I close the door and get in as well, I start the car and drive. What do you study? Biology, what about you? She says with her gaze fixed on her phone. Finances. She puts the phone aside and looks at me. Are you kidding? No, why would it be a joke? Because you have the face of anything but a math guy. I'm sorry to disappoint you, I'm studying finances and accounting, it's my last semester actually. And no, it's not easy, especially when I also have to take care of the business, it's taken me a couple of extra years because of that. Well, you are persistent. She puts her feet on the board and my mind betrays me, I'm sure I'm seeing those black leather boots on the board, but my mind brings up a different image to my head, a very similar one, that brings me nothing but pain. I totally distract myself from the road and step on the brake to avoid crashing. Hey, careful. What the hell was that? Where did you get your driver's license? I stare straight ahead, I don't want to look at her legs again. She is not her Dante, she is not, she is not Zoe, I close my eyes. I am sorry. Are you okay? Yes, just take your feet off the board please. Oh sorry. She cleans the board where she left the mark of the shoes she is wearing, I breathe heavily. Sorry, I got distracted. I noticed. Are you feeling better? Yes. Let's go then, we're late and I hate being late. She looks back at her phone, I drive like nothing happened until we finally arrive. I park the car in front of the main building. Dante. Dante. Over here. Harry waved his arms to get my attention. Harry, what's up? Hey, do you know where is the class? Come with me, leave the biologists away from this, let's go friend. I follow Harry and on the way I meet John. Dante, what's good? Last night was crazy, huh? We saw that you were very heated with Elizabeth. John tells me in a mockingly way. 
Ah, don't even remind me. Who else saw us? Me, John, Andrew, Pablo, and everyone with working vision. Why? Harry questioned. Saw what? What are you guys talking about? Come on, Pablo, pay attention. We saw you with Elizabeth yesterday, you naughty love machine. Says Harry. I sit on a bench in front of the building, I support both elbows on my legs. She doesn't even remember guys, in the morning I thought I could say hello to her with a kiss at least, but she sent me to straight to hell. What, we're not just gonna sit here after someone treats our friend like that, right Pablo? Right Harry, someone needs to put that brat in her place. No no, I don't want her to know, I'll let it go. Dante, do you like her? Hum, well fuck, if she had kissed any of you guys like she kissed me, you would know what I mean. Harry starts singing the same damn song they were playing yesterday while she kissed me. Be quiet. Can't you see our boy is hurt, Harry looks at Pablo. He starts singing too. I hate these fuckers. It's enough, shut up you two or as soon as I get to the car I will make you dance to to the beat of my bullets. The three of them laugh and begin to dance next to me, they push me and I push them. They keep singing and dancing, as the dirty part of the song comes. Does anyone else think that I don't need enemies with these friends that I have? It's not what you think, I didn't sleep with her, we only kissed, it's no big deal, it will paw. I feel like an idiot, I don't even know her, but I know her mouth, her lips, and the way she closes her eyes before putting them against mine. I roll my eyes. Oh fuck, there goes the teacher, see you later guys. We run to the classroom, everything stops when I look at Rose in my class. So it was true, she is here. I ignore her, and I sit behind Harry. Why didn't you tell me she was here? I whispered behind Harry's neck. I did. I told you she came just for you. But not that she would be on our same fucking class. I didn't know. I pat his right shoulder. It's all right. I'll handle it. She looks at me and I give her the most dry look that I can, that seems to make her upset. The class begins, and I'm so absorbed in what happened last night that I only limit myself to copying what the teacher writes on the blackboard, but I don't understand anything. Mr. Ferrati? I keep writing. Mr. Ferrati. Hey you, the new one. Ferrati. Ferrati. I come back little by little. Me? Welcome back to Earth, Mr. Ferrati. My classmates laugh. Thank you, but I'm not new, I turned 25 yesterday. The teacher raises an eyebrow, plus. I don't like funny ones. It is not a joke, I am not new here. Maybe to this school, but not to this career, nor to this town, I'm sure everyone in here already knows me, don't you guys? I have been Dante Ferrati for 25 years and one day. Doesn't the last name sound familiar? I look at him defiantly. The teacher gulps. I'm 90% sure he now knows who I am. Pay attention. I nod. But no. I can't pay attention. Clash. Elizabeth's Pov. We finished classes and I left the classroom. I walked to the main building where I saw Dante sitting on the, the car deep in thought and smoking. I approached slowly, and I realized that a girl was heading his way, with an attitude of someone who has something pending with him. We need to talk. She says as she crosses her arms in front of him and supports all her weight on one leg, Dante looks at her, calm, throws his cigarette away and says, It's been five years, Rose, it's obvious that you and I have nothing to talk about. He exhaled the rest of the smoke through the space between his lips, licked his upper lip, he was about to get off the car, but the woman put her hands on his legs. Yes, we have to talk. You can talk, but I don't have to listen to you. I stay behind the wall, listening. Dante. It's Mr. Ferrati or boss for you, you fucking traitor. Dante, listen to me, it was all a misunderstanding. Well, the fucking misunderstanding was very costly for me, Rose. Don't come near me anymore, I don't owe you anything, and neither do you. Understood? Dante. Just listen to what I have to say. Whatever you have to say, it's five years late. No, it doesn't have to be that way. 
I'm not interested in what you have to say. The only thing I can say about your kind is that you are traitors, just like Sabina and her people, and that your days on my family's throne are numbered. We are not the same as them as them, Dante. I don't give a shit, don't come near me anymore. You don't know how hard I'm controlling myself not to grab you by that pretty neck and put a bullet between those eyes for being such a shameless liar. I heard how she sobbed, I leaned out a little, she had her hand on her lips, trying to control herself before Dante's emotionless gaze. Wow you changed. You are an even colder motherfucker than you were before. Before, I was not even the shadow of what I am today, Rose, and tell that to the bunch of idiots who dine at your house every weekend. Do you think I wouldn't know? Tell them already that Dante is here, and that I am not going to rest until I recover what was taken from my people, and you know that I will. Good luck with that. She said as she wiped away her tears, trying to avoid damaging her makeup. I don't need your good wishes, Rose, I'll get them already out of Toledo, and that also goes for every fool that gets in the way. Are you threatening me? Take it as a warning or however you want. Rose? A person approached with his shoulders forward, it seems that he did not like Dante either. Paul I'm fine. I lean out to see and I bump into a view of Paul Moretti's frowned expression in front of Dante's, who had gotten off the car already, he is standing on the floor, he faces him, he doesn't flinch, he doesn't back down. Who do you think you are, you son of a bitch? Didn't they teach you to respect ladies? Ladies. Yes, but Rose is not a lady. Come on, tell him, tell him why you are not a lady, tell him how many times you've moaned in my bed like the filthy whore you are. The Ferrati were very respectful of women, I deduced that he said that to get Paul out of his mind, and that was exactly what he achieved. Paul loses control, tries to hit Dante, but he avoids his blow, catches his fist in the air and he crashes it against the wall. I was just about to send a message to you and your people, but since you are here, take the message yourself to that bunch of useless morons who live with you. Dante Ferrati has returned to get back what belongs to him, and I will crush anyone who's stupid enough to get in my way, just like this. If you really love this woman, leave her out of this, because I'm not going to put my gun down for her, not again. He lets his hand go and Paul smiles. There is no doubt that you are a Ferrati, it seems that being a delusional asshole is part of it. Do you realize what you are doing, Dante? You are alone. You don't have what it takes to come against us. You have no idea of what awaits you, just wait, be patient, you'll find out what I can do when it's time. Don't make me laugh. Are you going to run crying to Castilla with your allies? I'm not a coward like you, who needed the Italians to kill my family. What happens in Toledo is solved in Toledo, and you have some pending issues with me. You just came to die in your beloved land, the good thing is that there is place in your family's pantheon ready for you, that is exactly where you are going to end up. We'll see Paul. My heart is racing very fast, shit. Paul takes Rose by the arm and pulls her away, Dante stands to one side, breathing deeply. I approach him softly. Did you finish classes early? Yeah. Can we go already? He nods and opens the door for me, then he get in. He drives towards the hacienda, in silence, his hands and his arms are tense, his cell phone begins to vibrate, and he responds and puts on the speaker. What's up, Pablo? We saw Paul talking to his men, and they stared at us. Did something happen? I crossed some words with Paul and Rose, nothing serious. What? Dude, we told you not to face them alone. It was no big deal also, I honestly didn't think this was going to happen. At least not yet. Shit friend, you need some vacations. First Elizabeth leaves you all captivated with a bunch of kisses and now this. Pablo. I look at Dante with anger, genuine anger, he swallows hard. And when were you going to tell me about that? I say furious. Oh shit. Pablo exclaims. You messed it up, friend. He hangs up. How could you? What? You say it as if it's my fault, you came on to me and I have Sonny as a witness. I am serious. When were you going to tell me that happened? Stop the fucking car, Dante, now. 
No. Now. Stop the fucking car. He stops and I get off. Elizabeth, you were drunk, it didn't make sense for me to tell you. You don't remember and look how you get. I was drunk too, we just kissed, nothing else happened. Even though you wanted more. What? Fuck fuck fuck. How could you Dante? My dad will know. Oh he will. Should we start by telling him how who approached me and began to dance against me? Or maybe how you pulled my hair and started kissing me with such intensity. Dada not only that, you took my shirt off and wanted us to go to bed. Dot but unfortunately for you I'm a gentleman. Dot and I did not feel like it. Shall we tell him? That's what I thought. So instead of screaming like a neurotic, you should be grateful that I am a fucking decent person and that I'm hard to get. You are a bastard, an idiot, and a fucking opportunist. You are nothing but chaos, Dante. Fuck. Don't you realize it? You are so wicked that I bet that wherever land you walk on it never grows grass again. Don't get like this with me. It is not my fault that I remember it and that you don't. That's because you were sober, and I wasn't. Oh I was drunk, so much so that I woke up with my clothes on and I never sleep like that. I don't fucking have to know how you sleep. Well, you were begging me to sleep with me the other day, so I thought you'd like to know. He winks. Stop it with your drama, get in the fucking car and let's go home already. I'm not going anywhere with you. Elizabeth, don't be so annoying, get back to the car and sit down before I grab you and throw you in the trunk. If you do, I swear that the next time I see you off guard I will fill your chest with bullets. Well, you'll have to do it, because if you don't go back to the car the easy way, I'm going to take you by the hard way. Don't threaten me, Dante. I already told you what will happen, and yes, if it is a fucking threat, now come on, get in. Duh. I fucking hate you. I get in the car annoyed, but I get in the back. I'm not your fucking driver, you come up here now. I roll my eyes, I get into the passenger seat and I get away from him as much as I can, he drives to the house, and as soon as he has barely stopped the car, I get down and go straight to my room. He follows me, but I step ahead by a considerable distance. Elizabeth. Shut up, that's your best defense right now. I slam the door in his face. Ah, oh, what a crazy brat. I take my cell phone and tell Isabella and Andrea what happened. What you need is for all of us to go out and practice shooting in the field. What do you say? I nod, yes, that's exactly what I need. Okay, see you in the field in an hour plus. I throw my phone on the bed and step into the shower. Sorrow. Dante's Pav. Dante, man, I'm so sorry. Pablo says with the luxury of regret, while my cousins and Harry look at him angrily. Don't worry Pablo, you couldn't know she was with me. It's just that I never learn man, I must keep quiet, I really try. Get over it Pablo, it's okay. But you like that girl and I fucked it up, sorry man, you're not gonna shoot me are you? I laugh. Don't tempt me, I hit his head with my palm. It's all good, just allow some time for a pretty girl to appear on my way, and you will see how quick I forget about all this. We could go horse riding for a while, so you can relax and tell us what exactly happened with Paul and Rose at the university. Hmm. If only I had been armed. Dude, and how did you know he wasn't? That could have ended up really bad. I didn't know. I just have an instinct when it comes to those sons of bitches, I just wanted to kill him as soon as I saw him. The good thing is that was not Joseph, with that one you would have had a good fist fight until one was unconscious. Good for me, bad for him. I couldn't get even with that idiot. There will be the occasion, they are always causing trouble, you will get even before you imagine. I hope so. We walked to the stable where my friend's horses and my new stunning stallion were, we got on. Come on Bolt. Let's see what you can do. I caress my horse before galloping to the field, I look at the horizon, a green field that has no end, I sigh. It's still beautiful, isn't it? Like the last time I saw it, Pablo. Do you remember the last time we were here? 
It was like two days before hell broke loose, friend. By the way, if you want, we could go and leave some flowers. I mean the guys and I you don't have to go. Yeah, it's a good idea, I'd like to go too. I'm not very convinced, but I feel that have to go, we ride to the village where we buy several bouquets of flowers. Daisy's Harry, they were Christelle's favorites. Harry nods, buys the flowers and gets back on his horse, we ride to the Pantheon. Once we arrive, we leave the horses in the entrance, we enter and the very place makes my head ache. I walk behind them, who are the ones who have been coming often for what I see, we walk several meters. We will be around. Johnny tells me as soon as I read the first tombstone, I nod. My friends and my cousins walk back, I bow down, I didn't think that coming here would give me the strength to go back in time five years, to the moment when I thought I had everything to be happy and they took it all from me. I look down. Hi mom, I know that many years have passed, sorry for not coming before, but I did not have the guts to come here and think about where it would be good for me to be buried, I have missed you every day mom. I. I have reached the limit, I honestly don't know if you are the ones missing here, or if I am the one missing there, it doesn't matter, every day I feel more broken, and there is no one to help me put my pieces together. I wish you were here. I put the bouquet of flowers on my mother's grave and look to the right. What's up old man? I learned to ride, shoot and knock out people after all. I have improved in many things, I recovered some of our territories, and I have come for the rest, if only you could do this with me. Things will never be the same without you dad, thanks for the horse that you left me with Mr. Rick, he is the best, I would tell you why I have not come visit, but surely mom has already told you, at least you have her by your side to keep you company. I miss you so much that sometimes I wake up really wanting to look for you, but I know you won't be there. Dad, thanks for all you've thought me. Now comes the ones that make this even more complicated. When I grew up, they had taught me that sooner or later I would lose my parents, but they never told me what to do when I lost my siblings, especially in the way that it happened, both at the same time. Pietro. How long has it been man? Five, five years, you should be around twenty-eight by now, I haven't forgotten. Sunny came to my birthday, she looks beautiful as always, she says Zach looks just like you, he must be about six. When she saw me, do you know what she told me? That I was a lot like you, but I really don't believe it. You left those expectations too high, brother. I can never be like you, even if I stake my life on it all the time. There can be no one like you. I miss you so much. I am not even able to look at the tombstone that follows. I cover my face with my hands and start crying. Crestel, my beautiful girl, several years have passed. You should be sixteen by now. Are you still afraid of the dark? If necessary, I'll put a bunch of candles here, I'll make them fill this place with candles. Although you shouldn't be afraid, Mom, Dad and Pietro will take care of you. I am the one who should be afraid, I'm more alone than a dog in the middle of a road, but it's fine. I'm getting used to it. I brought you daisies, I know they are your favorites, in your eleventh birthday you wanted to fill the house with those. I miss someone drinking my milk every morning, or yelling at me in the middle of the street, I miss you throwing yourself over me every morning until I get up, I miss telling you stories to scare you away from the boys, you were my everything beautiful Christelle. I'm so sorry, I think I should have been the one in your place. I leave the flowers on top of my sister's tombstone, I wipe my tears, but it's useless, they keep coming out, I take one more step and it is as if I step into a trap that imprisons my heart and squeezes it. Zoe, I can't believe it's been five years since that kiss. Today I drove the Camaro again, a girl was with me, Elizabeth, my godfather's daughter, you must remember her, you spent more time in Toledo than me, she put her feet up on the board and I thought of you right away, I had to brake to avoid crashing. She is always getting on my nerves but I think I like her. I love you and you know it, five years have passed but I'm far from forgetting you, my love for you keeps me motivated. You know, Andrea is a woman already. I'm sure she misses you as much as I do, you left her alone. I did too, but it wasn't because I wanted to, I would never have left her and you know it. Now that I'm back, I will take care of her Zoe, I will take care of her with my life, I will not allow your mother to go through this again. I think your parents left Toledo, I don't know where they are, 
It must be hard for them to be here without you. I changed my look. Do you like it? At that time, even if I had worked out day and night, I would never be able to get a physique like this. It wasn't easy, but I made it. It looks good, and most importantly, I can now protect the ones that surround me. I also changed my hairstyle. I made the changes thinking if you would like them, it is very difficult to stop loving you. Give your boy a hand with this Zoe. I know you would have wanted me to fall in love again. We talked about it, and I promised to you that day, but Elizabeth is a star that is as far away from me right now as you are. Although I will at least catch up with you someday, dead, but I'll catch up with you. I guess that will depend on how much you help me, Zoe. Please, take her out of my head, I don't want to suffer for love again, and she is digging into my ribs. I leave the last bouquet of flowers on her grave, I look at another grave a few meters away, I don't know why it catches my attention at first, and then I remember why. Montreal, you fucking jerk, I laugh, you left me alone with this bunch of idiots. You owe me a bottle of whiskey. Something tells me that I will come back here soon. I will bring enough for both of us, as always my friend, on the rocks like men do. I turn to leave the Pantheon, I wipe the tears from my cheeks, each person involved in what I leave behind meant my entire world. When I came out my friends looked at me, Harry approached. Dante. Don't hug me. Or I'm going to fall apart. You want me to hug you, I know you, come here. He approached me and hugged me, I reciprocated and I burst into tears for the second time in less than 15 minutes. I'm going to fuck them all up, Harry, they're going to regret not killing me too. I know, I know, bro, you will, we are going to fuck them up, one by one, they will pay for everything they've done. Don't lose faith, it will happen. There is no worse combination than the urge to cry and the arms of your timeless partner in crime. The Trigger Elizabeth's Pav So Pablo was the one who said you had kissed Dante? Yes. I say before aiming and shooting. I imagine that the bottle is Dante's head. Ah. My brother doesn't get tired of screwing up. She puts her hand over her forehead. Well, someone had to tell me, wouldn't you have told me? We didn't see anything, especially me, I was dancing with Harry. Andrea said, before pulling the trigger. Of course you were. Look who says it the killjoy who ended up making out with the Prince of Mafia. You whore, shut up. You just took that one word out of my mouth. I push Isabella and we laugh. Suddenly we see the boys arrive on their horses. Andrea runs to where Harry is, a bit far from where we are. Isabella looks for Johnny. We're going to the river. Are you coming? I shake my head and wave goodbye to them. I stay there while I watch them fade away, I walk through the field when I see him riding at full gallop to where I am. Elizabeth, where are the boys? His eyes were somewhat swollen and red. Tears? They went to the river with Isabella and Andrea. Can we talk, Elizabeth? You know, about what happened. I don't think there is something to talk about, Ferrati. Please, I did not take advantage of you, Elizabeth. Seriously. Just listen. You kissed me, Dante. But it was not by force, actually the offended one should be me, because you were the one who kissed me and well, started making out with me. I got witnesses. You should have pushed me away. I couldn't do that. Well, you would have been a gentleman in my eyes. What? You took off your clothes in front of me. Do you know how far you could have gone? I stopped you, Elizabeth. Doesn't that count? No. Ah. He looks down and then he smiles. Of course it counts, I stopped you, I could have ended up in your bed and it didn't happen, not because you didn't want to, but because the way was wrong, I have morals, my mother was a queen, that's how she educated me. She almost nailed it. Elizabeth, come on, let's go to the river with the boys. I wouldn't go to the corner with you. There are no corners here. I look to the sides. How funny. I roll my eyes. Come on, dot you know you want to. I'm going to go, but not with you, so don't come near, remember I can shoot you. Elizabeth. 
I walk as fast as I can, he stays still, I walk and walk without stopping or turning back. Don't follow me because I swear on my life that I want to shoot you so badly, Dante. Don't give me an excuse and go home. I don't see why I would go home. I like it here. I am about a hundred feet away, when I hear the sound of the horse's legs, I turn. Do not follow me. Did you forget those are my friends too? He pulls the horse's rope and wants to move forward, but he waits for me to turn around. I keep walking, and when I hear the horse gallop, I turn around again, it doesn't stop. You are so stupid, Ferrati. I take the gun and pull the trigger pointing into the air. The explosion causes the horse to lose focus, it gets upset, it jumps while it keeps running. It's now out of control, shit. The horse finally stumbles between some rocks and throws Dante to the ground, shit, shit, shit. I get closer, the horse is still nervous, hurting Dante who is under his legs. Bolt, calm down boy, I'm so sorry, it was an accident, I didn't know you weren't used to shots, please, please, calm down, I take the horse's rope and caress him as I reach him, I caress him until he starts to calm down little by little. Bolt, I'm sorry, I did not mean to scare you, I'm so sorry. I caress him until he is totally calm, I pull him aside and look at Dante, who is face down. Dante. I approach him, I take his arm to turn him around and freeze when I look at him. There is blood in his forehead dripping down his whole face. Dante. Wake up Dante, don't fuck with me. His forehead is bleeding a lot, and his left cheekbone is purple god. I get away from the horse and shoot several shots, hoping that Harry and the rest would hear them and come, I return with Dante in a hurry, my heart leaps out of my chest. Dante fuck. I'm sorry I wanted you to stop, I didn't want to hurt you, please, forgive me. I place my jacket under his head, to give stability to his body, I'm shaking. You, you look pretty from down here, he. He murmurs with his eyes barely open, before falling unconscious. No Dante wake up, come on. Dante please wake up, I'll stop being nasty with you but please, don't do this to me. Tears fall down my cheeks. After a few minutes, they all appear on their horses. Help. Harry Pablo please help. Dante. Harry and Andrew are the first to reach him. What happened, Elizabeth? I did not know that the horse would get nervous with the sound of shots, I shoot and then he got scared and... I'm sorry, I didn't want to hurt him. Isabella, is he breathing? Yes, but he needs a hospital now, his pulse is very weak said the future nurse of the family. If we move him, we could hurt him. We have to go to the hacienda for help, we cannot take him like this. Go boys, we'll stay here. Shit. Tears betray me when I realize that he is turning pale. He's cold. Dante. Can you hear me? Dante. Isabella tells him as she tries to keep him in a position that allows him to breathe well. Andrea helps her. The minutes seem like hours, long and distressing hours, after a time that seemed eternal, several of my father's employees appear and with them the doctor of the town. Careful boys, we have to take him to the hospital. But that's two hours away. I scream in desperation. Let's hope he makes it, Miss Marino. Fuck my life. I'm going with him. We'll follow you closely. John nods. I follow my father's employees who move Dante with great care, I wipe off the tears, they put him in the truck, where I place his head on my legs. Keep his head like that, Miss Marino, that will prevent him from having a worse damage on his neck, because it's already hurt for sure. I gulp, the doctor gets into the truck and checks Dante's heart, stops the bleeding from his forehead and heals his purple and broken cheekbone. I get nervous, anxious the road seems eternal, truly eternal. We still had a way to go and I look at the doctor very nervous. His heart rate is dropping and his blood pressure is too. How did he fall? The horse got upset, made several jumps until he slipped down its back, it did not control itself immediately, so the horse stepped on his body several times until I could calm him. You did well. If he hit his head, he could have killed him immediately. Don't say that, it was my fault. After almost two hours, we arrived at the hospital. They carried Dante carefully, attached him to a neck brace, and stabilized him on the stretcher. X-rays now. 
I held his hand until I could not continue with him anymore. I felt my heart beating in my head. Once I let go I felt as if something were ripped from me. I can't be more stupid. I clasped my hands in front of my chest. My God save him please please. I dropped into my knees and burst into tears. Isabella came running up with the others and lifted me up from behind. It was my fault. It was my fucking fault. I cry inconsolably. Hurt. I'm so proud of you. She says while looking at my grades report. Well, you've helped me a lot. Ha ha. Thanks for the credit, but you worked so hard for this. On top of the most handsome, you are the smartest guy they first know. If you continue like this, you will graduate top of your class. You've been killing it. She says with a smile. Well ha ha, I have my moments. And at this moment, all of your little moments set you as the top student from first year. I couldn't be more proud. She kisses my cheek. I sigh. Do you think a real career is for people like us? Zoe is silent, staring straight ahead. I think we can do whatever we want. We are always free to chose and to chase what we really want in life. She smiles. You know what, I believe the same. Even though it was not true, that brought a beautiful smile to her. I parked outside the house. I think this will be the best vacation I've ever had. Are you saying it because it's the first one we go together? Maybe. She winks. It would be even better if it was just you and I, but my whole family insisted on coming. Oh stop. Ha ha. I adore your family. Is Sunny coming? No, she has to attend a wedding in Poland, but she will reach us there with the kiddo in a few days. Ah. Your nephew is beautiful. I can't wait to see him. Don't say that, I will get jealous of the little dwarf. Oh God, he's only one year old. Ha ha. I smile. We got out of the car and I helped Zoe with her bags. Hello, family. Zoe, you did come. Says my sister, excited. You were not going to have fun with my boyfriend alone, Miss Ferrati. They hug each other, as if they hadn't seen each other like two days ago. Come on, Dante, give me a hand with the suitcases. Hold on a sec, Pierre. I look out the window and I can see mom and dad in the kitchen holding each other's hand. I smile. I still have such a vivid memory of that day. When I had it all. When the mob didn't mean death to me. I didn't want anything else. They took away what I loved the most. They stole my life. My. Life. Dante's Pav. I open my eyes and groan several times, my vision is blurry, very blurry. I try to move but my body complains, I stay still. What happened? John? I whispered without opening my eyes completely. Dante dude, calm down, don't talk, just wait, I'll call a doctor. Harry runs to the door, bows his body, and sticks his head out. Doctor? He woke up, doctor. He walks towards me. What happened, Harry? You fell off your horse. I exhale with regret, everything hurts. A couple of minutes passed, and a doctor starts checking my pupils, my blood pressure, my heartbeat and my lungs. How am I, doctor? Somewhat hurt, but you are very lucky, Mr. Ferrati. That's what people say I say holding my breath, shit it hurts so bad. The damage is remarkable. Brain contusions, two broken ribs, second-degree sprain on the neck, shoulder dislocation, multiple blows, six stitches in the forehead, and it is a true miracle that you don't have a broken cheekbone, your femur has cracks, which, although it is true, you will not have much problem with that, you must be careful, what worries me is your back, we will have to keep it immobile, there is a muscle strain that could lead to something really bad. I sigh. Well, it can always be worse. How long do you think it will take me to recover? Four to six weeks, it will depend on you. Shit. When can I leave? When you are better friend, thank you doctor. Says Harry. I'll send a nurse to give you painkillers. You'll be fine, just don't push yourself. Thanks. I say lengthening the syllables in a low voice, the doctor leaves. My my you almost broke in two man. 
I'm too old for this shit, friend. I laugh. I was scared, dude. He crossed his arms, yes, Harry Castillo was worried. You know that it can happen at any moment, Harry. No man, don't fuck with me, you know you can't do this to me. I mean, not now, you idiot, but it could happen, you know. Have you slept? You look tired. No. What time is it? Four in the morning. Fuck. Go to sleep, Harry. No, Dante, I could not. Go, you have to take care of Andrea. I assign her care to you from now on, you will look out for her safety. If something happens to her, I'll shoot you in the balls. If she is in danger because of you, I'll shoot you in the balls. If they hurt her and you do nothing, I'll shoot you in the balls, and so on. You know how this goes. Is there something that can happen to her, without you having to soot my balls? I will define that according to the situation. I laugh go take care of her please. Sir yes sir. He leaves my room with not much enthusiasm. I stare at the ceiling. I can barely move fucking bolt. All this time being careful with my enemies just for him to literally come and dance over my almost dead body. I heard someone open the door, I would be too stupid if I couldn't recognize that scent, at least I can still smell if someone approaches. I keep my gaze down. Dante. Are you awake? The irritating brat says to me between hiccups and sobs. I look at her, she remains standing at the door, with her hands clasped in front of her mouth, she screams. Dante, I didn't want this to happen, really, I'm so so sorry. With my good arm, I wave her over. Don't be so loud. I whispered. But it's because of me that you fell and got hurt like this. I'm so sorry Dante, I'm stupid, I... Calm down, I'm fine. Nothing new, some broken ribs and a couple stitches, that's life. I... I am really sorry. Don't worry, I've been worse. It was my recklessness Dante, you could have died. Smashed by a horse? No way, sweetheart, I was born to die in a much more epic way. I was scared, a lot. I can't get the sound of that shot out of my head. Yeah, you should probably stay away from guns from now on. I smile, hoping that will reduce her anxiety. I am sorry. Are you worried about what my godfather is going to say? No. I'm worried for you. She says while looking at the ceiling. Oh, we are sincere now. Damn, do I have the appearance being close to dying? No, why? Because I never thought I'd ever see you like this, I laugh unless I was about to die or something. Ah. Uh, well, I just wanted you to know that I... I regret having shot, that I didn't want to hurt you, and that I am really sorry. I already knew it. You did. Yeah. You told me the day we met, you don't threaten before you do it. And since you threatened me that day, several times, I knew you wouldn't do anything, at least not in purpose. I sigh and that causes a spasm in my back, I stop breathing, I squeeze her hand. Dante. Dante? Fuck it hurts. I mumbled, when the spasm passed I looked at her, her eyes sparkle, she bites her nails, she doesn't know what to do, and to be honest neither do I. Stop biting your nails like that, you are going to eat your fingers before you even notice. I'm so stupid, sorry Dante, this is my fault. Girl, you're making em dizzy with so many apologies. It's just that you haven't told me that you forgive me. Alright then, I forgive you. Just like that? Do you want it to be harder? I mean no, but it was just too easy. For fuck's sake. I roll my eyes. Okay, no, I don't forgive you. Dante. She says pleadingly. Well, what are we playing here? Nothing, I just feel that no apologies will be enough. Shall I say something without risking you taking offense and finishing me off right here? Sure. She laughs. The apologies are useless, sugar, they do not remedy anything, they do not go through time, and they don't heal a heart. Okay, I get it, Dante. She nods thoughtfully. Dante. What? I didn't know your middle name was Ronan. She says while looking at the plaque with my name on it. Yeah. 
My name is Dante, Ronan Dante Ferrati O'Brien. What's yours? Rose Elizabeth Marino de Leon. I smile. Leon, like in lion? Yes. Is that because of your character? I laugh. Do not fuck with me and do not start laughing because I will take your eyes out. I laugh softly. What do you call a lion with a fancy hat? Don't fuck with me, Dante. A dandy lion. I laugh at my terrible joke, my laugh infects her and she laughs too. I would kick your balls if I didn't think that by doing so you could die. Thank you, I really appreciate it. I groan again. Ag. Dante. I'm cold. They didn't leave more sheets. I suppose the cold is getting worse because of the shaking, right? Yeah, it is. Ah. Uh, there's nothing around here. What if you hug me? What if I kick you for being a twat? Come on, I don't bite. And even if you want to, I doubt you can like this. She takes off her shoes and carefully climbs onto the bed. If you take off your clothes, you would transfer me more heat. I want to hit you now. No, no, please. I whispered. No, it wouldn't be good now. I hate you so much. She looks at me. Can you breathe well? I think so. Isn't it hard for you? I'm not sure, but settle down. I hope it hurts less if you kiss me again. Pardon? I hope it hurts less if you hug me. Ah, I thought I heard something else. Yeah, you fucking wish. Hug me, you owe it to me. Agreed. She leans on my chest gently and hugs me, my body tenses every time. I have spasms, I hear her sobbing, and I don't know what to say. His love. Elizabeth's pov. He whispered nonsensical things, he trembled at times, but the nurse said that we could not cover him with more sheets for fear that he would get a fever and it would be impossible to lower it. I left his side when he fell asleep, I had left the sheet wet with my tears, I felt so guilty. It was dawn and I felt his tired breathing, I did not want to go to school, not leaving Dante alone. Should I call him Dante? Ronan? I don't know what time I fell asleep, I was awakened by his groans, he was so tired that he did not even open his eyes, he just grunted. Dante. Dante. Wake up. He began to move and that made me nervous, very nervous. Dante, don't move. It hurts. He whispered. Easy. I took his hand, it didn't have much strength. I remembered that between dreams the nurse told me to turn a little knob so that Dante would have a supply of painkiller released into his bloodstream. Ah. Fuck. Stop moving, damn it. He wouldn't stop moving, he was upset and I had to find a way to calm him down. Think fast, Elizabeth. Without thinking much, I rushed to trying to reach the knob. If I turned around, he would keep moving his body and that would hurt him. I reached for the knob and turned it to release analgesic, but at the same time, I lost my balance and almost fall on top of him. I was able to regain my balance, but I was left almost facing him. I looked at his face, damn this bastard looks hot even in this state. I don't know why, but I instantly give him a soft kiss on the lips. I felt his body begin to relax, I separated my mouth from his, he was looking at me like I was from another planet. Better. Yeah. He said, looking at me with those huge blue eyes, totally puzzled. I placed his apparently healthy hand on his chest. He was still on another planet. What's wrong? Kinda stunned. He said, trying to hide his confusion. Because I kissed you by surprise? Oh please, Dante. I'm sure that has happened to you many times. If you say so, so that does mean you like me now? I look at the ceiling and tilt my head then I shake it. You're right. I can't explain why but overnight I started to like you. It's just that I'm very nice. He coughs a little. It must be because of that. I approach him and stare at him, he is all fucked up, purple and inflamed, but he is still handsome, I think my first mistake was to accept that from the beginning. Three days Dante, in three damn days you have achieved from me what many could not achieve in a year's. What did you do? 
Falling off a horse? Is that attractive? I laugh. Maybe it is. Rest for a while, I won't leave. I settled back on the couch and fell asleep until about one in the afternoon. I woke up because I heard the doctor talking to Dante. Doc, I would rather go home, I don't like hospitals, my grandfather used to say they were jinxed. The doctor laughs, I also laugh at his look. It would be the best thing to stay, but if you really want to go home. I guess they could take good care of you there. You will know how to demand that they treat you well, won't you? You know it, Doc, I'll get all the care I need. I promise. Does that mean I can go now? Not yet. Tomorrow, you still need to rest and I need to be sure there is no brain damage. He purses his lips, remains thoughtful and then raises his eyebrow. I think he has an idea. I can do that at my house. Dante. I tell him. One moment, pretty. He clears his throat. Please, I assure you that I will recover much faster at home, in less time than a rooster crows. He nodded as the neck brace allowed him to do so. I insist, son, I will discharge you tomorrow. No, today. Dante. I protest. It's non-negotiable, son. You have to stay just one more night. But I need to go to college. Well, you can go and catch up the day after tomorrow or next week. I doubt you can stand going to college in that condition. That is my business. He says with a frown. How can he do that when he has a stitch in his eyebrow that should prevent him from it? He really is stubborn. Ronan. I protest. He freezes. The doctor tilts his head to one side. Tomorrow, Mr. Ferrati, not today. If you need to move, I'll send someone to help you do it. He exhales with regret. Ah. Thank you, Drive. I'm at your orders. I want to go home. Does that sound like an order? I was talking to her, Mr. Ferrati. He rolls his eyes, the doctor leaves the room. You are the drama king. I shake my head. What a help you are, I don't want to be here. It's not like you can decide that, Dante. I cross my arms. You're truly hurt, so you will stay here and shut up. I was just starting a stare contest with Dante when Andrew and Johnny appeared on the scene. I sat back down. Holy shit, Dante, you look like terrible and what's next? Thanks, Andrew, you don't know how much that helps me. Man, what a blowout Bolt gave you. That's what I get for trusting him so soon. He lows. Never mind, since you're here, give me a hand. He tries to get up and I feel a vacuum in my stomach after that sight. I swallow. Is this a good idea? I don't give a shit, I don't feel my butt anymore, I have to move now. Both support him to help him sit down, and I think it is not good for him. You can see the pain in his face, it hurts to his guts, but he will not accept it. Andrew stops Dante with his apparently healthy arm, and Johnny stands behind in case he stumbles. He takes a couple of steps limping with his right leg. Dante, you better lie down man, before you fall apart. Fuck you John. He puts his hand to his head, he seems to get dizzy, but after a moment he regains strength. I walk like a drunk without a fucking milliliter of alcohol in my blood, this is bullshit. Does anyone else think otherwise? I stare at him, and he looks at me as the extra rigid collar allows him. What? Am I funny to you? Well would you look at that, the omnipotent king of the mafia, ultra fucked, I bet they'd pay me top dollar for some pictures of you in that robe. You must want to wake up like a cheese grater, you know, filled with holes. Is that a threat? It depends on your next actions. He took a couple of steps again. You idiot. You and your dirty mind. I laughed, and at that moment, Isabella and Andrea came in. Dante, God, look at you. I know I'm charming, you don't have to remind me. You need to shave, Dante, you look like a castaway. I can't deny it, but damn, I kinda like how it looks. Well, fuck your look. You too, says Andrea, pointing to Johnny and Andrew. We'll take care of shaving him before he gets out of here. Any problem, Dante? He rolls his eyes, I like him with some facial hair, but she's right for the moment he won't be able to take care of it until he recovers. So, Andrea. 
I went to visit her the day of the accident, after all this time. I brought her some flowers. My stomach shrinks again, and I take a deep breath. Who is her? I cross my arms. Dante, why didn't you tell me you were going? I could have gone with you. I needed to do it by myself, and I could, even though it hurt like we were going back to that day. It wasn't easy. I know how hard it must be for you, she is lucky to still have your love. To have your love? What's going on here? Fuck this guy, I get up from the couch and leave the room. Where are you going in such a hurry? Did you leave the stove on? Maybe. He noticed my noticeable discomfort, I keep walking, I'm not going back. Elizabeth? Johnny, did you bring your car? Yeah, why, something's wrong? Give me the keys. No, what's wrong, Elizabeth? Why are you so angry? Give me the fucking keys now, John Ferrati. He gives them to me without saying anything else. I keep walking towards the car, the beautiful Corvette. I get in and Johnny just watches as I get in his car in the entrance of the hospital. You will not play with me like that. I'm nobody's doll, you fucking stranger. I hit the steering wheel, damn it. The Dark Angel Dante's Pav I couldn't find the doctor, and if I had found him, I would have shot him dead for being a liar. He didn't discharge me until two in the afternoon. The good thing is that I would finally go home. My godfather had come to pick me up with my friends who had just gotten out of classes. Everyone went, everyone except Elizabeth. I exhaled the moment I noticed. She is more bipolar than this weather. What's wrong, son? Nothing, Godfather, I just need to go home. No worries, son, we're leaving, come on, let's get out of here. My Godfather got into the car, the whole time I had to keep my eyes straight ahead, I couldn't turn my neck for anything in the world. Let me know if you are comfortable, son, otherwise we will hire professional help, just like that, don't be shy to ask. Thank you, Godfather. I hope that won't be necessary. We arrived at the hacienda. Johnny and Andrew helped me to get out of the truck. I was feeling pretty fucked up, and my right leg was failing me from time to time. I looked at the pool to see if Elizabeth was there, and no, she wasn't. I looked to my right side and found Bolt in the distance. I wouldn't mind putting a bullet in that little bastard. Says Andrew. Whoever does anything to him will have to put up with me. Bolt. Hey bud. I approached him slowly, we hadn't been together for long, but he recognized me. Hey buddy, how are you? I caress him. If someone treats you badly, I'll shoot them dead. I tousled his hair. Let's go Dante, you need to rest. Yeah, I really do. I moved slowly to my bedroom, Elizabeth's door was closed. Dude, I don't want to leave you alone, but the guys and I have to go to soccer practice. Do you think you'll be fine? It's okay man, I'll be fine. Rosalie's here if you need anything. Yeah thanks man. Harry comes out of my room and I lie in my bed, all by myself. How did I get settled so fast in this place? I keep thinking. I have to see her. I leave my room struggling with every step. If it wasn't for all the painkillers I wouldn't be able to walk. I take a deep breath, avoiding the pain as much as I can, and finally I gather the courage, I knock on the door. Elizabeth? Are you there? I wait, and then she opens the door and looks at me as if I were a landlord asking for the month's payment. What do you want? She takes out the lollipop she had in her mouth. Where is the Elizabeth from last night? You didn't go to the hospital. Why would I? You have many people who appreciate you, who take care of you and revere you, as if you were the last gangster in Toledo. I guess, dot, but you're important too. I sighed. Don't forget that I hate you, and that if I went to the hospital it's because I had a guilty conscience, I kissed you because I felt sorry for you, and I'm talking to you now only because I'm polite. She looks at me, it's clear that she's upset, but the question is why the fuck is she upset? What's bothering you, Elizabeth? Besides your presence? Nothing. Why the intrigue? You're upset, well dare I say you are. 
I I looked up at the ceiling for a few seconds and looked back at her. Jealous. Jealous me? Ha, like you were Justin Bieber or something, you wish Dante. She says to me as she puts both hands on her hips. What? You like Justin Wiener? His name is Bieber. How old are you? Twenty. What's that got to do with it? Come on, tell me it's a joke. I told her, pleading, I can't like a woman with such taste. No, it's not. Now, are you leaving? Because I'm busy listening to Justin's music. I hate that dude's music. I said. Perfect. Another reason to love him. Goodbye. She slams the door in my face. Elizabeth, ah, it's okay. Just help me lie down. My back hurts, please. She leaves her room annoyed. Walk. Don't just stand there like an idiot. I walk, trying to keep my balance without supporting myself onto the walls. I'm coming. Don't try to look brave and just support yourself on the wall. If you fall, you'll stay there. Would you leave me lying there? If it's because of your recklessness, of course I would. I swear it. You're so mean. It's not for nothing that they call me the Dark Angel. She lifts up her blouse a little and shows me a tattoo on her side. Why Dark Angel? Why didn't I see that tattoo? Why didn't I see it the day I got here? Am I losing my powers of observation? It's not like the tattoo doesn't catch attention. Fuck Dante, you're out of line. Seriously. Well, that's how they started calling me after they learned what I am capable of. I may look all soft and innocent, maybe even like an spoiled girl who has no idea about how this world works, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I learned how to take care of myself, even at the expense of my own innocence. I may look soft, but I'm lethal, and I made my enemies know that for fact. Also, it might have something to do with the fact that my favorite weapon is the bow. I dip my arrows with dendrotoxin. If the arrow does not kill them, the venom will. Damn, such a killer instinct hidden under the beauty of an angel. I sit on the bed and she keeps me from falling all at once. She pulls my fucked up leg up on the bed and I do the rest. She arranges my pillow. Comfortable? Yes. Thank you. I close my eyes immediately. The bed tells me it loves me and then, then I want to marry it. I don't hear her come out, so I'm forced to open my eyes again. She found my picture with Zoe and she's looking at it. My heart is crushed. Um, that is Zoe. She's pretty. Is she your girlfriend? Yes. I sigh. How beautiful. Did you get her flowers the other day? Yes, I did. Why doesn't she come to see you? Because she's dead. Elizabeth turns to look at me. I guess she didn't expect that answer. She hesitates and looks at the picture again. Don't you look so happy with her? I haven't been happy since. I had everything, and in a matter of seconds, I lost it. How did it happen? I swallow. I'm going to cry, but it's something that, according to my heart, it's better. I say, "Fuck it." She has to know, once and for all. We were going on vacation with my family. It was the first vacation we had together. It was all of us. Things were very tense with our rivals. The Italians, commanded by Sabina, I bet you've heard about her, had just made an alliance with the Moretti. They used them to gather information from my family, as they knew we were close. We heard rumors about the alliance, but they always denied it, claiming that they would never dishonor the oath of allegiance we had. Those fuckers lied to our faces after all we fucking did for them. Anyways. That day, as we were heading to the coast, about five black cars ambushed our van. They had killed our bodyguards the day before and infiltrated their people to pose as them instead. We had no protection; they had it so easily to end us. I remember there was an explosion in the back of the car, which made it overturn. The one where Zoe, my parents, my brother, my little sister, and I were. My belt broke, and somehow I ended up outside the van with a piece of metal burning on my back. I still have a big scar from that. All I remember after that is seeing the van on fire in front of my eyes, and then all turned into darkness. I was in a coma for three months, and when I woke up, they told me that everyone had died. 
Johnny and Andrew told me that my dad died instantly, as well as my younger sister Christelle. She broke her neck when we crashed, she died from the injuries, as well as my mother. My brother died in the emergency room, the iron pierced his organs. Zoe was in intensive care for a couple of days, she had a respiratory arrest, and when she could no longer fight, she died as well. They expected me to die too, and after I found out what happened to them, I expected to die too, but I didn't, for some reason. It took me time to reconnect, at first I couldn't move, I was in therapy for a long time, it was much more serious than this dance that Bolt threw on me. I don't know how, but I survived, even though sometimes I wish that hadn't been the case. I'm not so strong anymore Elizabeth, I was strong for a long time, and now I'm getting tired. She wiped her tears, I didn't think it would move her that way, but it happened, the strange thing was that I didn't cry while I was talking. Dante, I had no idea, I'm really sorry. Don't worry. It's fine. Do you want me to stay? No, it's not necessary, you keep listening to Justin Weiner, she smiles. Justin Bieber. If you call him that again, I'll hit you on the shoulder until you get it right. Whatever. I closed my eyes and it hit me. The dread I feel of history repeating itself, the enormous fear I have of losing, of being happy with something and for that to be taken away from me. It is better to stop this now, although I know it is already too late. Ice Cream Elizabeth's Pav I went into my room with my hand over my mouth so he wouldn't hear me sobbing. How is it possible that he can live with so much pain, how can he bear so much? It's been five years since Andrea lost her sister, her sister was Zoe, that girl I had seen several times when I was a kid, and the same girl that was on that photograph, it's Zoe, that's why he is so protective of her, she's the sister of the woman he still loves. I sigh, I feel so much pain for him, he lost his parents, his siblings, the woman he loved, God no. I made the stupidest assumptions in the world and left him there, when probably he needed me. I went back to his room, he had his eyes closed, I settled next to him, and I think I scared him in the process. He put his arm around me, and I got closer to him. I thought you didn't like hugs. That damn comment of mine that slipped out the last time. I don't like strangers to hug me but you're no longer one, you're my everything. I stopped breathing, I couldn't look him in the eye after I said the stupidest thing ever told by someone in history. When has a woman, known a man for a few days and then told him that he is her everything? I'm going down in history as the stupidest girl in Spain. Are you always this bipolar? Are you always this stupid? I finally look at him. How rude. You are the rude one. Who gives you the right to look this good even with a smashed face? Elizabeth, let's see, it's been days, we've known each other for days. On the first one, you almost killed me with your gun, on the second, you kissed me, on the third, I crashed on the ground because you scared my horse. Ten minutes ago, you were very rude and hated me, and now you tell me I'm your everything, how should I take that? I'm crazy, I like you, but I dislike you too, handsome. He laughs, touching his ribs to avoid hurting himself. In my defense, I'll say that Romeo and Juliet fell in love in a day. Are you contemplating that they ended up dead, he says. No, of course not. I say indignantly. Well, maybe you should, this is serious, Elizabeth, and if I promised myself something five years ago, it is that I wouldn't to suffer for love again. I couldn't take it. I, I like you too, you have something I haven't seen in someone for years, you are very special, but I don't want to suffer again, I don't want to lose again. I don't want to either. I've also lost loved ones, believe it or not. Let's make a deal then. A deal? Let's stay alive, shall we? Whatever it takes. Right. Let's stay alive, handsome. And let's kill whoever we need to kill. Have you killed someone? Yeah, I have, I'm not the dark angel for nothing. Things are going to get out of control when I get back on my feet, Elizabeth. Why did you come here, Dante? To finish off the Morettis, they were the ones who murdered my family and took everything from me. And then, Sabina will be next. You're going to risk your life for revenge, Dante? It's not just revenge, it's redemption. And justice. 
And how do you know Joseph won't kill you? Have you seen how powerful he is? Are you underestimating me? I just don't want him to hurt you. Now I understand why Andrea goes crazy when you do this stuff. She knows you better than anyone. I know what I do. I don't know if I believe that, you're hurt, and I understand that, but I don't think it's worth it for you to gamble your life on this. I. I have to do it but not now, for the moment, you will be calm and I will be calm if they don't provoke me. I intend to take back what's mine without having to kill half the city, that has never been my thing. And I thought you were a heartless hitman. We are losing our values, aren't we? I smile. Do you like me, Dante? I asked him, he stared at me. Badly. I haven't wanted to be with someone in years, and... I'm terrified, you know what they say, what begins quickly ends the same way. Don't think like that. I have to go to school tomorrow, I'm taking finals, it would be a crime to miss classes when you enroll basically just to take finals. But you haven't even studied, plus why do you even want that degree? What are you going to do next, apply for an entry position as an accountant? I laugh, I don't believe you can even add up, haha. <laughs> You would be surprised, and why I want that degree, well someone has to manage those piles of money. We'll see what's next. We laughed. Do you like all this, stuff? No. I never liked it, but we didn't choose who we are Elizabeth, this life was imposed on us, and we don't have many options, other than to live it or die trying. Dante, if you left those plans you have, wouldn't it be easier for you to live? Yes, technically, but the problem is that I couldn't really live like that. The Moretti took care of taking away everything I had, and when they mention them to me, my blood starts boiling instantly. I can't leave this unresolved. I understand that, but it's very dangerous. Everything has its risk, Elizabeth, everything. Hmm. Let's not think about that for now. I turn to look at him, I'm very close to his lips, my mouth melts. You know. I'm very hungry. Hungry? Yes, I see strawberry ice cream, I want it. Ice cream? Where? I put a finger over his lips. Here. Ah. This girl. I thought you were stoned for a sec. He says confused. Shut up, I said I see ice cream and that's it, it's right here. I caress his lips, he remains inert, still serene. I get closer and kiss him. The best part of this is when he reciprocates with his hand, apparently healthy. He grabs me by the neck and kisses me hard and it feels better than ever. I move to have better access to his lips. My godfather is going to shoot me out of the house. He doesn't have to know and if he does, I'm going with you. Never test a woman's character at the climax of her infatuation. I keep kissing him. Elizabeth. I kiss him again. And again. I can't breathe. Oh, I'm sorry. I let him breathe. Wow, that was intense, just how I like it. All I ask for a little tiny bit of time to breathe, other than that, have no mercy, get over here. He doesn't have to tell me twice, and I go back to action. I kiss him so fiercely and then give him a break to breathe. You can't ask for a better therapy, Ronan Ferrati. I don't like that name, call me Dante, it sounds better. Since when does the name give class to the person and not the other way around? Well, if you say it, but it still sounds better. Okay Dante, how are you feeling? Sore, like if a horse had danced on top of me. I laugh. Dante, about well Zoe, well, I had seen her before when we were little, she was Andrea's sister, right? She was always very nice to me, that now I understand many things, I'm so sorry I didn't know about her and about your family. I wish things were different for you, and that way you would be happy, even if that made our thing impossible. Things happen for a reason, Elizabeth. Don't worry, you didn't have a way of knowing. I had to ask more questions, I didn't know if he would be willing to answer another time. Why were you fighting with Paul Moretti in the parking lot? You saw us, he says in a serious tone. I heard more than I saw. He likes getting into things he has no business in. 
It has to do with Rose, doesn't it, he sighs. Yes, like I told you, before they were enemies of ours, they were our friends. We all worked together and considered each other family. However, for some reason, I could never have a good relationship with the Morettis. It's like this was bound to collapse at any moment. Rose's family, the Biancos, joined the Morettis in the conspiracy. I never saw that coming, which is why it hurt the most. Rose was someone that Zoe and I trusted. And you know what we do with traitors. The Mafia does not forgive betrayal. Exactly. For that very reason, I came back. I should have died in that accident, but I didn't, which is why my duty is to get justice for what they did to my family. Yeah. Don't think about it anymore, okay? I get comfortable and hug him. The neck brace, which also keeps his back fixed, is the villain in the story, not even letting him turn to face me. Stay with me tonight, okay? Yes, of course I will. I settle down next to him. I think I could stay here all my life. Bring it. Dante's Pav. The next day, I was the first one to wake up. Elizabeth was sleeping so peacefully that it would be rude to wake her up so early, I had things to do anyways. It was not a problem to get up, since I did it slowly and that also prevented me from waking Elizabeth, I sat on the bed gently, I took a couple of painkillers and swallowed them, the pain was sharp at times and mild at times but always constant, that made me sick. I had no problems until I had to put on my shirt, I couldn't get the sling off, in simple terms, I was in a lot of pain. Do you need help, Mr. Ferrati? I smiled turning my back to her. If you are so kind. She stood up and her warm hands touched my back, my skin crawled, she helped me take off the sling. Your shoulder is green and purple. And very big too. You're so silly sometimes. I groaned when I felt her loosen the sling. That's what happens when things aren't in place. Does it hurt? Yes, but I take it like a man. Are you sure you want to go to school like this? It's finals day. I will just take my exams and go back. Well, my dear accountant, I'll get dressed and we'll go together. It's a pity I have to drive, isn't it? Does that have to worry me? I don't know, do you like racing? Yes, but not if I'm the passenger. Too bad, today is not your day then. I don't think it's been my day in five years. We'll do something about it. She helped me with my shirt and repositioned my arm, I'm in a lot of pain, and I get tired of standing. I know. You're going to have to go to therapy, I'll talk to the Garcia, I think they have someone who can help you. Thank you. Once I was ready she went to get dressed too. I grabbed a walking stick she had brought for me and walked out of my room. Good morning, Dante. Didn't they tell you that you had to rest? I'm going to finish the university with Dignity Godfather. I'm taking an exam, and I'll be on my way back here. How are you feeling? Very sore, but I've been worse, no doubt. Did you just get here? Yes, Elizabeth helped you with what you needed? Yes, she was very kind, actually, rare for her. I smile. I know, you know how the ladies are. Painfully unpredictable. Yes, I know, Godfather. Did you talk to the Montreal and Castillo? Yes, your Aunt Diana was there all the way from Las Vegas. They are waiting for you to go to Madrid to start planning everything, but I think it's safer here for now, or how do you see it? It depends on how things go here, Godfather, but I just gotta say, I'm happy in here with you. My dad trusted you a lot more than he did with the family, and that must be for a reason. You know, your father was distrustful even of his own shadow sometimes. But he trusted you, and that is something I do too, Godfather. Trust your judgment, son, don't let people tell you who they are. Figure it out yourself. We can't afford to make a mistake when it comes to that. Yeah. I learned the hard way. That's both bad and good. Now you have the experience, but whether the story repeats itself is up to you. Elizabeth appeared on the scene as my godfather and I were eating breakfast. Did you just came, Dad? She kisses his cheek. Yes, sweetheart, and don't worry, Dante. Harry said he was coming to take both of you to college. I don't think he will be late. You know that one drives like the devil. 
I know, Godfather, but we still have time. I saw Harry and Pablo coming in. Talking about the devil. Good morning, Mr. Marino. Dante, your time has come. Everyone is alarmed, except for me, of course. Has it? Yes, brother. Isabella and Andrea want me to get rid of that beard of yours, so get ready. I don't know how you managed to grow it so quickly. You're kidding, aren't you? He looks at me in a pleading way. All right, all right. I roll my eyes. I finish my breakfast and agree to let them get rid of my glorious and very masculine beard. You better do it right and don't cut me because I'll shoot you right here. We know, we know. It had been useless that Elizabeth had helped me with the shirt, because they ended up taking it off, and the neck brace too. I felt my head very heavy, they settled me perfectly and began to shave. I didn't move and not because I didn't want to, I didn't move because I couldn't. It didn't take them long to leave my chin completely bald. Where is Andrea? I left her getting ready. Did you already get people to protect her, Harry? Don't you know me? Of course I did, bro. Great, just wanted to make sure. She will be fine as long as we're all here and you get better. You're right. After a few minutes I'm almost ready, I feel weird. Something's missing. Like five pounds, of both the hair on my face and that neck brace that I was already getting used to. I couldn't get up from where they had put me, so they had to help me. They carefully positioned my base and put my shirt and sling on. Ready. They helped me up and I looked at myself in the mirror, boy was I missing something. You look good. Harry assured me. You look great man, like you were fifteen. Pablo laughs and I hit him with the walking stick. Calm down old man, don't be a tease. He rubs the area where I whipped him on his way to the exit. Let's go, we don't want to be late today. Elizabeth looked at me and raised her eyebrows. Wow. They've made you look about five years younger, it's kinda weird. I know. I compressed my lips. You look gorgeous anyway. She says to me in a whisper, I can't help but smile like a real idiot. Harry grabs my backpack and we board the black van, the color of mobsters and diplomatics. Like there is a difference. Harry drives to the university and looks for a place near the campus to park, when he finds a spot he stops there. Elizabeth removes my seatbelt, and something smells bad to me. What's wrong, man? Victor and Marcos Moretti are looking very carefully this way. Don't let them start something, this could get out of control, everyone get down. I get out of the van followed by Elizabeth, who looks uncomfortable. Wasn't Victor in Rome? I think things are changing, Pablo. Do you know what happened when Napoleon started to conquer Spanish territories? They sent all their people here because they would need them. The Morettis already know that this is going to get out of control, and they are preparing, they want the privilege to decide when it will happen. I take Elizabeth's hand and she walks nervously. The legendary Dante, or what's left of him. I don't know if they had noticed, but it's hard for me to identify the Morettis. After the accident, I forgot many things, except for the pain, that was as present as the memory of that piece of metal burning on my back. But it's not long until I remember everything. I smile without much desire. Victor, right? Don't you remember me, or what? Should I? I remember your sister. He wants to throw himself on me, but his brother Marcos avoids it. No Vic, not here. Don't even think I'm going to show you mercy, Ferrati. you're going to pay for everything. The same goes for you, I hope Paul got my message to you. We are not afraid of you. I didn't expect that you were afraid of me, but you should be afraid of those who protect me. Let's go, Dante. Convenient for you, isn't it, Elizabeth? Shut up, Victor. Come on, Dante. I throw them a murderous look as far as my neck allows me, which is not much, and walk to my classroom, where the teacher is already waiting for us. Good evening, Mr. Ferrati. Oh God, what happened to you? A foolish horse. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Does your godfather know you're here? 
Yes, why? You know, I don't want any trouble with him. You can take the test a different day if you wish. No, I'm fine, don't worry. She relaxes. I think it will be easy for you. I know about the schools you've been to, it shouldn't be a problem. Thank you. Well, take a seat, I'll start handing out the exams in five minutes. Harry arches an eyebrow and shrugs his shoulders, we enter the room and take a seat. Why do I feel so strangely uncomfortable? Bath time. Elizabeth says pav. It's okay, it's okay. Ah fuck. It hurts like hell. It was fun to listen to Dante's tantrums while doing physical therapy. His annoyed, indignant, and deadly faces are like watching a movie. Stop whining, Ferrati. I told him as I tried to read something, but his screams and his movements wouldn't give me a moment of peace. This guy wants to rip my head off, ah. Uh. He looked at him in a bad way, I couldn't stop laughing, Dante is a very dramatic being for such a thug. He's doing his job, Dante, don't be a crybaby and cooperate. He rolls his eyes. Okay then, but easy, buddy, because the moment it hurts me like that again, I'll have to execute you, got it? He got in position again, to continue with the exercises. I looked at him and sent him kisses every time he looked at me. Cry baby. I told him in an amused tone, he looked at me with narrowed eyes. You think this is funny, don't you? A little, especially when you lift up that pretty ass. You naughty girl. He said while smiling mischievously. You have no idea. I said seductively. He snaps his mouth and smiles. Hold it right there, buddy. Fuck, warn me at least, dude. Can't you see I'm busy with the lady? It's not the his fault that you're not paying attention. I stand up and drop the towel, which falls at the same time as Dante's jaw when he sees my black bikini. Damn, mamacita, I just got thirsty all of a sudden. Dante, don't be ordinary. I reprimand him, hoping no one had heard him, he smiles at me and blows me a kiss, I roll my eyes and turn my back on him and dive into the water. That doesn't offend me at all. He shouted in a completely unapologetic way. I got out of the water and watched him hugging the chair while he sang passionately. He said almost said the last words in a purr, I laughed. I swim while listening to Dante's screams of pain from the exercises. Stop crying, you're distracting me. Not that it will make you forget how to swim, sweetheart, but if you forget, you are in luck, because I am a very good swimmer. I think that's all for today, Mr. Ferrati. It was about time, bud, you almost sent me back to that hospital. The therapist helps the crying Dante to sit in the wheelchair, he exhales once there, relieved, I stare at him as I float in the water. Rose Elizabeth, right? Yes, Rose Elizabeth. Rose, dot let me think of a good one. Are you talking about songs? Yes, but you keep swimming, I'll watch you from here. I kept swimming, I saw him pick up the guitar and look at it for a few minutes, then he started to play something and sing, I came to the surface and watched him carefully as he sang. I came out of the water while he was singing, I took the towel and sat near him to look at him like a real fool, the whole song went away in size, when the song was over I approached him, he looked at me, I guess he was expecting a kiss, but plans never go as one expects. You disgust me, I tell him taking his sweaty shirt with my index finger and thumb, I let go of it immediately, you need an urgent shower sir. You're so mean. He frowns, you left me with my mouth in the air, you're the worst. Time to take a shower. You're so dramatic. It's not like it was radioactive sweat. You're so irritating, have you noticed? I'm here with a sore arm playing you a song and you send me to the shower. Are you even human? Shush, to the shower, Mr. Tantrums. He tightened his lips, sighed deeply, put the guitar aside, pretended to have some dignity left and pushed the wheelchair into the hacienda. Harry hasn't come today, and I doubt he will, he's taking care of Andrea. So you're not going to take a shower? How disgusting, Dante. Why? This is the smell of glory. You have to go to the shower. All right, all right, I'll take a shower. But if I had a hand, everything would be easier. 
Well, it will be easy for you because you have two. But this one doesn't work right now, so. Will you help me? He gives me a mischievous look and I smile, he even plays with his eyebrows, I smile more. Okay, do you know if my dad is coming soon? Nah, he won't at least for a few hours. Okay, let's go. We go into his room and I took off the rest of his clothes. Okay, you take off your boxers when you get in. He looks at me with a raised eyebrow. Aren't you coming in? With you naked? No, absolutely not. You see this face? He points to his manly, handsome face, I cross my arms and look away. Yes. It's the face of disappointment. I chuckle, he laughs too, wow, disappointment looks amazing. It's okay, I'll just get in the bath alone, just me and my damned lonely soul if I have one. Of course you have it, if you didn't, you'd be dead. I almost was. Don't exaggerate, you look pretty alive to me now. Now get in the shower. Wait, I can't take a shower without music. He turned on his phone and got into the shower while I waited outside, patient. He was singing the whole time, well, not the whole time, he was quiet for several minutes, many I would say. Dante. What happened? Nothing, I just wanted to know if you were still alive, literally. You're so rude, I'm almost done. He limps out of the bathroom, I don't like that. Your leg doesn't cooperate, does it? Never, that has always been my problem, but it's getting better. I offer him the walking stick, he declines it, walks to the bed, sits down next to me. Hum, you smell good. That's my boy. I also did 35 minutes ago. Chocolatey. He starts a new song, puts his index finger on my lips and closes his eyes, waiting for the moment to sing. I don't know what it is about your eyes, I don't know what it is about your mouth that dominates my cravings and drives my blood crazy. He goes. I help him get dressed, and it makes me so nervous when he sways, he was about to fall, but the guy wouldn't stop singing. What an influence your lips have, that when they kiss me I tremble, they make me feel like a slave and master of the universe. I could no longer resist the temptation and I kissed him, while I kissed him I directed him to the wheelchair, he looked behind him when he felt it, he tightened his lips. I don't want to. Sit down Dante. But I'm not incapacitated, I'm just temporarily fucked up, which is different. Sit Ronan. Don't talk to me that way, I'm not a dog. Come on Dante, just sit down. He rolls his eyes before he sits down, I help him to adjust his bad leg. We were walking down the hallway when I heard my father's voice and the voices of other men, Dante frowned. Who could it be? I don't know. We advanced to the living room where my father met the Bueno family, a powerful family that stood right in the middle of the Morettis and the Ferrati. Dante, good to see you, it was good to hear you sing once again. Oh God, so they were listening. Son, do you remember the buenos? How could I not, Godfather, nice to see you gentlemen. Dante, we heard you were here and we stopped by to say hello, Raul and I have business to settle. I can imagine, Mr. Bueno, how nice to see you. What happened to you, Dante? A foolish and beautiful horse that doesn't want to be tamed, but I'm much better now. Take care of yourself and get plenty of rest. Of course I will, Mrs. Bueno. Well, we are leaving, we just stopped by to say hello. I looked at Olivia Bueno, she was more or less my age, but I didn't like the way she looked at Dante, and he didn't seem very comfortable with her in the room, I smiled as a person who doesn't want to smile does, we waited for them to leave, Olivia's look at Dante didn't please me at all. Are we allying with them, Godfather? We are, they have access to the borders. We have that too, don't we? It's one of the most important and crucial territories Dante, especially the border with Italy, and as long as we don't get all of our own territories back, we have to get along with them. And make sure that this alliance will last and cannot be broken. And what do you have in mind? We are working on something, but we will make an unbreakable alliance, you will see, we need them to control the borders. I know, Godfather, 
Although I don't see why they want alliances now and not when my dad proposed it, it gives me a bad feeling. They are trustworthy son and very serious with their businesses. I know that too, I know them godfather, I just don't understand why they want an alliance and the most intriguing thing, why with us we are not half as powerful as we used to be. They have no other choice. You will see why. I swallow my breath as I look at my dad, I suspect he what he has in mind, and I doubt Dante will like it. Elizabeth, will you take me to my room? Goodbye, Godfather, we'll talk about that alliance later. Sure, arrest son. I took him to the room, Dante was in a trance, I took his hand to help him up. I'm fine here, thank you. That was a nice way to say get out of here, I need to think. If you need anything, you can call me. I left the room. What am I going to do? Victor. December 23rd. Dante's Pov. I was feeling better, but that wasn't the best part, the best part was that it was noticeable. Three weeks have passed since my catastrophic fall from the back of Bolt, and I am doing much better, I have pain from time to time, but at least I don't need the neck brace anymore nor that awful walking stick, my arm is doing much better, I am recovering strength. Today is the traditional grad party at the university, and of course I can't miss it. I chose some black jeans, white sneakers, a white polo shirt and my black leather jacket. You will wonder why so much black, well, that's because I read an article that the color of what you wear reflects the color of what abounds in your soul, and well, you will know how it goes, plus I like it, I think it makes me look even more lethal than I am. Ready, Dante? Yes, Harry, let's go. My cousins and friends had decided to go on their motorcycles, and I was not going to be left behind. I sent for my Ducati 1199 from Madrid. What about the girls? They will arrive later, you know, women. My friends stare at me as I get on the motorcycle and put on my helmet. Is it a good idea for you to ride a motorcycle, Dante? They took off your sling a week ago, man. Don't be so dramatic, if I fall off you'll pick me up. We laughed and I was the first to move forward, Harry came behind, then Pablo, Andrew and finally John, after moving forward for a few minutes, we arrived at the university and parked on the side like good guys and talking about good guys. Dante. How are you? Says a friend from my class. Much better, Jacob. Ready for the best night ever? Ready. He smiles at me, I take off my helmet placing my right hand underneath almost scratching my chin and pull it upwards, I move my neck a couple of times. I look to my left and meet the gaze of some Moretti's, Biancos and why not, the Buenos, I smile and shake my hair, I know it kills the girls, I put the helmet on the bike and adjust my jacket. Boy do they like what they see. Mr. Ferrati, so it's true you always like to make triumphant entrances. I get busy with the buttons on the sleeves of my jacket and don't even look at her. How are you, Olivia? Are you going to be that harsh to me after all we had been through? Well, you don't look like a woman in need of affection to me. Besides, that was a long time ago, I don't even remember it. I said with irony. I can't blame you, it's been a while. Look at us. We're not kids anymore. Well, you're still four years younger than me, so for me, yes, you're still a kid. Dante. Is your conscience bothering you now? You talk like if you hated me, is that how you feel about me? Just a little bit, a little bit about you, and a little bit about Rose. You say that as if Zoe didn't know what kind of man she was dating, she knew you were a first-class womanizer, whether she chose to act the fool or not was her own business. Shut up, Olivia. Things are different now. Are you going to go back to doing what you did before Dante, just like you chose to love Zoe, only to have someone take her life in your face? That's none of your business. I tell her very closely, she recoils, as she should. You haven't changed much, you're still that impulsive guy who threw punches like an idiot at the slightest provocation, I'll only tell you one thing, times have changed, and your daddy is no longer here to keep you from being shot to death. You expect me to feel threatened? I said as I glanced around and made sure no one was watching.
Your family and the Biancos think they can threat and shoot everyone who doesn't act the way you want, and let me tell you, you can't do that, those times are over, I will not let you or anyone manipulate me again. Good night Olivia, stay away from the booze, don't forget how you ended up the last time. You bastard. She tried to slap me but I stopped her hand. Careful pretty you're gonna hurt my feelings, ha, huh, sorry. I get close to her ear, I don't have any do I? I continue my way to the party, I get happy when I see that there is a band playing live, I hug Harry and shout like a real Ferrati. What if you sing one for us brother? Pablo shouts, while the people look at me. Yes Dante sing. I walk to where the band is, I turn around by inertia and that's when I see her come in. The song comes to my mind immediately, I tell the guys which one, and they start playing, she looks at me, she understands the song, the context, everything, she smiles discreetly. I finish singing, and I'm about to approach Elizabeth, when I'm intercepted by Olivia. Shall we dance? Are you joking? No. I was going to evade her, and then she put her hand on my chest. Are you going to be so rude with a new member of the group? I swallowed. I know that would be a display of disrespect towards our recent association. There were eyes everywhere. All right. I don't even pay attention to the music, I'm barely dancing. Olivia looks at Rose as they were both in the mood to provoke something. How have you been? Like that matters to you, keep dancing and let's get this over with. I care about keeping you entertained, you know that. No thanks Olivia, excuse me, I'm already thirsty. And nauseous, I walk to the area where the drinks are. Johnny, where's the ice? It run out man, I think there is more in the cooler by the front desk. Okay, I'll get a bag. Yes please. He said while dancing with someone whose long hair is the only thing I only saw. I leave the glass where I took it and walk to the direction where the ice is. The moment I finish carrying the ice, I'm going to dance with Elizabeth until her feet hurt. I smile just imagining her tired face. No, Victor, wait. What do you want me to wait for? Get off me. I frown when I recognize the voice. I approach immediately. I form a fist with my hand as I get closer, and before anything else, I pull Elizabeth's arm and then smash my fist in Victor's face, who loses his balance and ends up on the floor. What do you think you are, you son of a bitch? He lies there and looks at me. Elizabeth pulls my arm. Dante, come on, let's go. She tells me desperately. So that's what it is. You love her, don't you, Dante? I see it in your eyes. You love her, you are so pathetic. He said in a mocking tone, son of a bitch. Those will be your last words, you stupid motherfucker. Just as I was about to pull out my gun, Elizabeth stops me. No, Dante, it doesn't matter. Let's go, please, let's just go. I stop and look at her. What does she really want to avoid? Dante, 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 he stood up. You still think you can beat a Moretti? Don't be so stupid. Wait a moment. Didn't she tell you? Oh, Elizabeth. Already keeping secrets. What? W-H-T is he talking about? Shut the fuck up, Victor. Come on, Dante. She pulled my hand and I did the same. I looked at her waiting for an explanation that she didn't want to give me. She doesn't want you to kill me because before you it was me. But you know what? In a short time there will no longer be you. Elizabeth pulls me, shrieks while pulling on my arm. Come on Dante, please. That's not possible, your people haven't been on our line for five years. Well Elizabeth didn't care, that's right Dante. Before you had all that it was all mine, but that doesn't matter because she won't be mine, and she won't be yours either. Shut up Victor, shut the hell up and you walk. I keep listening. Let him Elizabeth, let him know once and for all. I look at Elizabeth, release my grip, and walk as far away from her as I can. Dante. She says as she chases after me. Don't talk to me. I pull the motorcycle out ignoring Elizabeth. I walk briskly pushing it towards the exit. Dante wait. I keep walking, angry. I sigh violently several times, those sons of bitches. Get away, leave me alone. 
No, listen to me. I drop the bike, and I know I'm going to regret it. I grab her arms and push her against the wall. When were you planning to tell me that I'm the idiot in your story, Elizabeth? When? Dante, I wanted to tell you, but I couldn't. I love you, and only you, please. Shut up, I don't believe you. This is how you repay me for letting you into my life? This is how you show gratitude, Elizabeth? By keeping secrets like this from me? I love you, Dante. I love you with all my heart. Shut up. I shake my hand and hit the wall very close to her. She flinches, then cries. Don't come near me again, ever. If you do, I won't hesitate to kill you. Dante, I... Don't say a word, Elizabeth. I don't want to see you again. Don't come near me. I get on the bike. Don't drive like that. I don't want you to get hurt. Do you think I can get any more fucked up, Elizabeth? I start the bike and I drive away as I hear Elizabeth's pleading crying for me to stop. Dante. Dante. Stop. You're going to crash, please stop. Dante. I don't stop. Past mistakes. Elizabeth's pov. I had been waiting for him to arrive all night and he never showed up. It was six in the morning, I made tea and stared at the door, thinking, trying to figure out mentally where he might be right now, what if something happened to him, what if he crashed? My stomach cringed, even if I wanted to, I couldn't sleep, not if he was outside, alone, barely recovering, the cold is his worst enemy now, I stared at the window, as the light was getting brighter, I was absorbed in the window until I heard someone stumble through the door. Dante. He was drunk, very drunk, he could barely stand, I tried to stop him, but he put his hand on me to keep me away. Leave me alone, leave me alone, he said, slurring his words. No, listen to me. I struggled with him. Please listen to me. No, I don't want to. Go and have fun with Victor, and you can leave me in the misery you found me in. I notice that he's not only drunk, he's also dirty. Did you fall? From very high, ha, huh? oh, you mean because of the mud. I went to sleep next to a woman who I was sure loved me, but she is dead. Dante, did you sleep in the Pantheon? I say while covering my mouth with my hand. It doesn't matter, I'd go to fucking hell if I could, just as long as I wasn't near you. He moves into the hallway. Dante. Stop, Elizabeth, let go of me. I'm fucked up and I didn't think it could be any worse, but I always surprise myself, stop fucking with me, don't talk to me, don't come near me. He wobbles a little. Dante. I tried to get him to keep his balance, but he avoided me at all costs. And don't touch me either, liar. He takes a couple of steps back and stops against the wall. I want to see my godfather's face when I tell him you messed around with a Moretti. I didn't. Oh, you didn't? Well, I don't care. I don't want you in our group anymore. I don't want you around. The Godfather will have to choose because of you. I think you can go pack your things and go back to Los Angeles. Dante, if you tell him that they will banish me, you don't WVWN know how it happened. You know what? I don't care. You can go and ally yourself with the Moretti, but don't expect me to stop a bullet against you. I won't because the Ferrati don't forgive betrayals. Dante, that was a long time ago, I didn't betray you and you don't know what happened. If you had been honest with me, things would be different, Elizabeth. I tried. And I am trying, please, listen to me. All the time you kept us from confronting them, and now I know why, you didn't want me to kill your boyfriend, but you know that bastard is going to be first on my list, get the tissues ready, because he will be the first of the more ready to kiss my feet before he dies. Dante, stop, you're not a murderer. I sob. No. Maybe not, I'm not, but what about you, huh? He takes his gun, puts it in my hands, and points it at his head, it's loaded. Dante, no. My hands are shaking, I try to let go of the gun, but he forces me to hold it. How deadly really are you? Are you going to shoot? No, I won't hurt you. I love you Dante, that was before I met you, and he lied to me, I never wanted to be with him, I left him as soon as I could, understand for fuck's sake I was wrong, okay? I was wrong, but now I only care about you. 
I closed my eyes as I felt some slight pressure of my finger on the trigger. Dante. I sobbed. Shoot, I can't take this anymore Elizabeth, look at me. I can't, I'm sorry, I should have told you what happened between Victor and me, but it was a long time ago, I swear, long before you. You didn't tell me, it doesn't matter if he was your preschool boyfriend, he is one of my worst enemies, shoot Elizabeth, do me a favor. I am tired of being here, and I think this is a sign that I shouldn't take it anymore, so be good to me, even if it's just for this time and shoot. No, never. He lowered the gun to his chest, right in front of his heart. Do it, it would have been better if I was shot before I found out that you have been my enemy's woman, rather than mine all this time. No, Dante, for God's sake, I love you, don't do this to me. You already screwed me. Are you going to shoot? Finish the job. There's no way I could shoot. Then get out of my way. Dante, for God's sake, you can't do this, you can't leave me alone like this. I'm already doing it. He walks down the hallway, leaning against the wall, I follow him. Elizabeth, stop. Get the fuck away from me. He enters his room and slams the door in my face, I knock desperately. That's how you end your love affairs, Dante. Well, yes, you're fucked up, but that's how I loved you, and I still love you. Victor just wanted to fuck me, and he almost succeeded. He told me he would protect my family if I was with him. That happened years ago, and it lasted four months until I discovered what kind of person he was. I flew to LA a week later to get away from him and this life forever. I love you. I haven't loved anyone like this, so please don't be a son of a bitch and open the door, open the door, open it now, or I'll take it down. I swear I will, Dante. I slammed my hand on the door. Fuck. Open the fucking door. I kick it several times, until he opens it, he's wet, he's gone into the shower, the water is freezing and he's pale. What do you want, he says to me, while looking everywhere but at me. To love you, Victor is not the reason why I avoided at all costs that you confront them already. I didn't want to lose you, and you hadn't been well. I care about you, I love you and it's as real as you and me. He just looked at me, inert, as if I were a stranger to him. I, I don't believe you. He closes the door slowly, I look down and walk to my room, I put my hand over my mouth to keep my sobbing quiet. Elizabeth? My friends are here, I burst into tears. Victor told him what happened, he went crazy, I can't stand being like this. Harry and Pablo look at each other. You should have told him, you know those secrets never last. I didn't think this would happen. Did you know? Dante appears at the door and asks with a clear sad look and teary eyes. Dante. Harry intervenes immediately. Harry, did you know? Yes. He tells him without any gesture of concern. He breathes furiously, puts both hands on his hips and sighs. Dante. Pablo was about to approach, but Dante extends his hand. Shut up both of you or I'll kill you right now, you pair of traitors. We're not traitors, Dante, it's not our place to tell you, it was Elizabeth's duty. You swore loyalty to me, he shouts, leaving us all silent. We are loyal, we are here. Harry replies. To support her. You aren't exactly innocent, are you? He remains silent, raises his eyebrows and then shakes his head. What did you say, Harry? That you screwed up too, with Rose and with Olivia, you were with both of them and who knows with how many others, all while you were dating Zoe. Do you think I didn't know that? We all fucking did. He opens his mouth wide and so do I. You don't know anything, Harry. Of course I know, you know very well that I know because I was part of all that, but now you are blaming Elizabeth for a stumble with Victor. When you stumbled with Rose, with Olivia, Jessica, and 10,000 more, even when you knew that the Biancos were not close to our group, you cheated on Zoe with one of them. Who is worse here, Dante? Everyone is silent. I, I was. He says at the same time that a tear runs down his cheeks. So? Are you going to keep telling Elizabeth how much she screwed up? No. More tears, I was the bastard here. He looks at me. I'm the one who always screws up here, 
but it's a good thing it's over now, I wasn't honest here either. He was pale, and that worried me a lot. We both made mistakes. Not as much as I did, I damn the hour when I thought coming back here would be a good idea. He wipes his tears and walks back to his room as Harry hugs me. He hates me, Harry. He has two choices now, and I think his heart has always been stronger than his head. Harry, you're crazy. Why did you tell him that? Pablo, what did you want me to do? If I let him go on, he would have ruined Elizabeth. He knows better than anyone that a mistake in the past does not define you. I just had to remind him. What a way for you to refresh his memory. Anger. Dante's Pav. I stared at the ceiling most of the day, today would be Christmas dinner, and I had to get ready to see her again. It wasn't possible that being who I am, I am being crushed by the love of a woman who could betray me at any moment. I'm sorry Zoe, you deserve justice somehow, didn't you? I get dressed for the occasion, it's the first time in five years that I'm going back to this Christmas celebrations thing. The problem is when you start missing people at the table you don't ever enjoy them as before, even worse if it's your whole family. I leave my room hoping to get to the table firmly, but I can't. I'm about to kneel before her when I see her wearing that beautiful silver dress, I stand up with what I have left of my pride and strength, and I walk to the table where my friends, my cousins and the buenos are. Good evening. Good evening, Dante. I greet Pablo's parents. I avoid him for the moment as well as Harry. What's wrong, Dante? Andrea asks me. Nothing, I'm not in the mood for this. Did you argue with them? Pablo and Harry were looking at us. I looked slightly at the ceiling. I tilted my head a little. Not exactly, it doesn't matter. I feel my cell phone vibrate, and I turn away from the crowd to answer. John? Dante? What's up, bud, are you okay? We need you to come, we've got some news on Sabina, we found the bitch, there's a lot involved. Do you have a way to get to Sabina? I think if you come, we'll figure it out better together. I'll be over there soon, I'll call you when I am close. I exhale. Let's move fast, we can't miss this chance, stay in touch. Yeah, see you there. I hang up. Something wrong, son? Some business in Italy that I left unfinished. Priorities shift more than the dollar in this business. Tell me about it, son. We have it all resolved with the buenos. We are going to carry out that unbreakable alliance, and we are about to make the announcement. Let's go to the table. I doubt you want to miss this moment, son. We move to the table where everyone is gathered. I avoid Elizabeth's gaze, who looks at me expectantly. Good evening everyone, thank for your valued company. Tonight, we are celebrating more than the traditional festivities, we are also celebrating the alliance between our group and the Honorable Bueno family. After several years of pursuing common goals, we are proudly to say that we've decided to put away our differences and focus on all have in common and realize that we are stronger together. Today, we celebrate the union of two empires, and what a better way to close an alliance than celebrating an engagement, the engagement between my adored Elizabeth and Jacob Bueno here present, congratulations. To a new era of success and prosperity. My ears stop listening and I freeze as I see everyone celebrating in some sort of slow motion. What did he just say? Everything looks blurry, and it is when I look at Elizabeth, she seems as puzzled as I am. Excuse me. I walk away from the table before I pull out my gun and kill everyone, I walk as far away as I can. Dante, Dante, wait. I turn and hold him by his tie, staring at him. Did you know Andrew? No, no one knew, I don't think even she knew. Fuck. Andrew hugs me, and I cry like a three-year-old baby who's had his favorite candy taken away. Dante, you know now she has to get married. No, she doesn't have to, she doesn't have to marry him, fuck diplomatic relations, she's mine. She has to, if she doesn't, we're all going to lose everything. Maybe even our lives. Fuck everything, Andrew. I can't conceive the idea of her being with someone else. Yesterday I found out that her and Victor, ah, 
Dada, now I find out that she has to marry Jacob so we can continue recovering land that already belongs to us. It's all bullshit. No way I'll let her marry that bastard. I'll kill him first. She has to do it, Dante. You know you can't. Nobody's going to tell me what I can and can't do. The group opted for this plan. If you don't follow it, they will exile you. I remain silent, mute to be exact. What? I was told the leaders of each family agreed on this, one of them being your godfather. It's the plan. Whoever doesn't abide by it is out. You know there are rules to get rid of whoever breaks the will of the majority. They'll kill me. Only if you don't comply. But I cannot allow her to marry him. You have to let her go, you know how it is, it's our business Dante. No no, I will not allow it. If she doesn't, they're going to kill her too. I turn to look at Andrew. What? Raoul guaranteed that Elizabeth would agree to marry Jacob, didn't he? If she doesn't, they're going to kill her, as she would be breaking the leader's will. I don't know the Buenos well, but I've heard they are ruthless, they would never accept such disrespect. I exhale with regret. I can't stay to see that. We'll leave whenever you want, you don't have to stay. If the leaders were to find out that you had an affair with her, I think even you wouldn't be spared the punishment. Fuck them, since when do they have more say in here than me? Since they made millionaire contributions to the organization. While well, we haven't even recovered half of what we once had. I exhale again with regret, I let myself be carried away by anger. Is this what I have to pay Andrew? Is this the price? Is this the price for having failed Zoe when she loved only me? Is this how I have to understand that I had it all, and lost it because I was an idiot? Did all this happen because I provoked Rose's spite? Is this how I have to pay for having betrayed you, Zoe? You did what, Dante? Andrea looks at me from afar, her eyes sparkling. Andrea. You did what? Andrea. How could you, Dante? You cheated on my sister with Rosé? She was her best friend? How could you? Andrea. I was wrong and I'm so sorry. She loved you, she loved you, Dante. How could you hurt her like that? I thought you loved her. I thought she was right to save you that night, but no, she should have saved herself, she should have left you in that fucking van. What are you talking about, Andrea? Andrea, stop it. Andrew warned her, she came up to me and gave me a slap that hurt more than anything else. My sister didn't die because of the crash. She was conscious after it happened, you were still inside the van and she came back to save you, the van's gas tank exploded, and the piece that burned your back went through her chest, she died to save you. My whole body becomes weak, and I feel very cold all of sudden, I look at Andrew demanding an explanation that is not going to remedy anything. I, I'm sorry. I'm even more sorry, she was all I had, I was all she had and she preferred to leave me alone to save the man who betrayed her. I fall to my knees, Andrea looks at me with so much hatred that I see Zoe's hurt look again from when she knew I was having an affair with Olivia. Shish thought she knew. It doesn't matter to me. I confessed it to her, Andrea. That doesn't matter to me, and I am happy that Elizabeth is marrying someone else so she doesn't end up dying for you, even if you don't deserve it. Andrea. Don't talk to me, don't ever speak to me again in your life, Dante. You don't know how much I cursed that day when my sister exchanged her life for yours, when you don't even deserve the bitter pill you are putting me through. Andrea, I... Go to hell, go to hell, she wipes her tears. I don't even think I can walk at this point. You're going to fall into the hands of the Moretti, and it's less than what you deserve, much less. Andrea, shut up. Come here, Dante. My cousin tries to lift me up, but I throw him off, he lied to me too, I get up by myself. I enter the hacienda straight to my room, I throw everything I have near me, I can't stop the tears, I feel weak, I throw myself on the bed, by the time I become conscious of what I'm doing, I realize how cold I am, I notice that the big window is open. I lean over to take some air. 
I look in front of me, then to the sides, the fourth floor of the hacienda, I stare at the horizon and I feel the tears freeze on my cheeks, it couldn't get any worse, I sigh, I look to the ground, it's far away, as far as my redemption, I close my eyes, come on Dante, it will be a thousand times better if you are not here. Farewell. Elizabeth's Pav. It was four o'clock in the morning, and the only sober one at the party was me. After my dad's announcement, Dante had disappeared and I wished we had done it together. I swallowed before getting out of the grip of drunken Jacob. If he knew I couldn't stand him, I run to the hallway and knock on the door. Dante, open up. The tears come on their own, I can't stop them. Dante, I didn't know it, open up please. I knock harder on the door and realize that the door is open, there is a brutal mess in his room, he broke everything he could break, I find his leopard medal on the floor, I grab it immediately. I'm sorry Dante, I'm so sorry. I keep looking for him in the house, but he's not here, I leave the hacienda, I look to the sides, and in the distance I see Andrew walking, I rush towards him when I see his mournful expression, my chest collapses. What happened Andrew, where is he? He's gone, Elizabeth. He went to Italy, he's going to get Sabina. What? He can't, they're going to kill him. I think that's what he's looking for. I have to go get him. You can't, Elizabeth, the leaders have spoken, your marriage to Jacob is a non-negotiable arrangement. No, it is not, I will go for him and neither them or you can avoid it. You can't help it, if you don't get married, they're going to kill you. I don't care, I have to go. You can't, I what if they find out you have something with him, if you run away, they'll hunt both of you down in Italy. I don't love Jacob, he can't think I'll marry him, I can't even stand him. I love Dante. I love him Andrew. That's why you have to do this, you have to get married believe me, I already thought of options, there are none, if you don't get married and they find out it's because of him, they're going to kill him and he can't face them by himself. No, no, you have to help me. You think I don't want my cousin to be happy? But I can't think of anything. You have to let him go and marry Jacob, your lives depend on it. I can't. I can't. Your father guaranteed your cooperation. Don't make things more difficult. You have to get married. I will be with you. I hug him and cry on his chest. I want to go with him, Andrew. They are going to exile whoever doesn't comply with this. They have orders to kill whoever doesn't comply with the plan. There is a lot at stake with this alliance. Dante is not immune and neither are you. You can't be the target of two sides. You have no chance to escape. They would kill you both. I have to do something, Andrew. I don't want to be with that idiot. I need Dante here with me. I sobbed into his chest. You have to calm down for Dante's sake. I nod, I can't believe it, I go back to the hacienda and Andrew goes to the kitchen, he knows I want to be alone, I sit on my bed and stare at a dead spot. After several minutes like that, I put on proper shoes and leave the house. It's December 25th, I look for an open bar and sure enough I find one. Elizabeth, the usual, says the bartender. Double. I stare at nothingness, the tears drain on their own, he hands me my drink and doesn't ask, he knows he shouldn't ask, I think about the way this angered him, but also everything we lived together, how much I enjoyed to hate him, how quick and easy it was to love him, how good it felt to be with him and listen to H.S. stupid jokes all day. I pay for my drink and go home, lock myself in my room, and I keep thinking about him. The way I met him was strange, I think I didn't even expect it, at this point of my life, after everything I have lived through, I preferred to be by myself, I would have never thought that he would steal my heart in such a short time. I always thought it was better to be by myself, although on days like today, without wanting to burden him, I would tell him that I feel empty without him here. I don't really know what I'm going to do without him, if he doesn't come back, if I can't see him again, I remember very little of what I was before I met him. Having him in my heart is not enough to calm the loneliness, his presence tattooed itself there and it will not simply fade away. 
It's complicated because life has given me memorable beatings, but then he arrived with that ability to turn the world around with a smile, and that's when I felt alive again. I remember his hardness, how we both managed to put our walls down and it felt so easy, so natural. People like us are not as cold and heartless as we may seem, we are just cautious, we have been disappointed, abandoned, hurt, and deeply wounded, to the point of following life almost by inertia, wearing coldness as an invisible shield that protects us from the pain, but there is always someone with whom we can put it down, and life has never been as beautiful as was when I met him and knew that it was no longer necessary to shield myself away. Because I knew he would be there to protect me and love me just as much as I did. I felt unmanageable things every time his eyes set on mine, I saw things I had never seen, I felt things that I've never felt, and dreamed of a life that I've never dreamed of. I take a notebook and start writing. This winter will be the longest of my existence. Dear Dante, I was never as happy as I was with you. I was never myself as much as I was when I was with you. I never was until I was with you. There is no doubt about it. You can be in hell without being dead. Because now I am alive, but I am without you. To be continued. Sequel, House of Diamonds. Available now.